Matinee in the conference tonight. Henderson State is at Arkansas Tech. Tech will be here next week. Southwestern is at Washita, Southern Arkansas at Henderson. East Central is at Southern Nazarene. And a game that has been affected by the weather move from the campus of Arkansas Monticello to Monticello High School. The Rangers of Northwestern will visit the Bull Weevils tonight. That is a 6 o'clock kickoff in Monticello. Last week, OBU staffed the football 84 times. It's the ninth time under current offensive coordinator Grant Gower and since the reboot of OBU football that the ball has been snapped offensively 80 or more times. They did it three times one year ago. Captains are meeting. Southeastern has won. They will get the football and they will move with the wind of their back here in the first quarter of play or into the wind, should I say, out of north from right to left. That is the Bison pregame show. Stay tuned. We're back to Shawnee for the opening kickoff in a moment on the Bison Radio Network. Trade it in for more and buy it for less. At Hudeberg Chevy in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Chevys for less. And you'll get payments that fit any budget. HudebergGN.com. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. Trade it in for more, buy it for less. It's that easy. At Hudeberg Buick GMC in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Buicks and GMCs for less. HudeberggM.com. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. They will get the football, and they will move from right to left, south to north across your radio dial here on what has turned it out to be a very pleasant, a little bit sticky, but very cool afternoon, 69 degrees, the official game time temperature. Oklahoma Baptist to the brand-new home uniforms for the first time, gray and white with green and gold piping of, down both the sides of the pants and the sleeves. I know where you're going, Brooksy. Southeast of the all-white with blue numerals trimmed in gold. Yes, after two years of politicking, we can see a home jersey's number. You got it, baby. You can tell those numbers. It's, ex it's exciting, to say the least. Luke Wendell, who just joined us moment, uh, moments ago as the Bison Player Spotlight feature this week, will kick off. And he will do so to Cody Norris and Michael Robert, neither one of which had an opportunity to return a kick last week in a whitewashing of Southern Nazarene. And here we go. The home opener is underway. It's going to be Cody Norris for the one to bring it out to the 10 down the middle of the field, to the 15 to the 20. And he is hit at dropped at about the 27-yard line. And uh, helmet has come off. It looks like the headgear of Caron Hedrick has come off. He'll come off the field as Southeastern will begin this drive just shy of their own 28-yard line. Aaron Regis with a good tackle on the up the middle there. 14.52 to go here in the first quarter. Southeastern with a good offensive line. Pound for pound, they average 284 yards. The quarterback will be Austin Skinner, a 5'11", 180-pound junior from Teague, Texas. He opens in a shotgun formation. He'll give it straight ahead to Kenneth Burks. And Burks tiptoes his way behind right guard Kevin Gray, a returning all-conference selection out there with the offensive line for the Savage Storm for three out to the 31. The Southeastern went in a draw play, tried to get to a pass rush there, but it didn't work. The Bison stayed at home on the front line. Burks last week, 20 carries, 103 yards. They're in a pistol formation. Burks again gets the call, cradles the football tight, cuts from left to right, and is across the 35 to the 36-yard line. He needed seven. He got five, so it's going to bring up third down and short. We'll get your station identification in just a moment. Last week, Southeastern was 6 of 13 against Southern Nazarene on third down tries. A year ago, they were in the middle of the pack of the Great American Conference at 36% on third down conversions. 
Third and a yard and a half. The line of scrimmage just beyond the 35. We'll call it at the 36-yard line. Pistol formation. Now they empty the backfield in motion. Burks to the far side. And flags litter the field. And that may be against Southeastern. That would make this third down opportunity much, much more difficult. Quickly, let's identify stations across the Bison Radio Network. Todd Miller, John Brooks, Scott Wanish, and Nate Baldwin, our network producer here with the booth. It is a false start against the center, Jeff Davis, number 60, so it's back at the 31. Third down and six. Twins both left and right. First pass opportunity afternoon for Skinner. Pocket holes, throws deep, busted coverage. Sims is wide open to the 35, to the 30, and he's gone. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Jalen Sims. His second touchdown in as many games in OBU guys blew big time coverage in the secondary as there was not a Bison defender within 10 yards of Jalen Sims. Yeah, the wide receiver ran right past Jason Lee on the zone. Looked like there was some confusion. That whole play started with just tons of time for Skinner to pass. Austin Skinner last week, 12 of 16, two touchdowns, only 135 yards. Joel Carlos, one of the best place kickers in the league to make it 7-0 to the north end. Good snap, ball down. Carlos with a one-step approach, and the extra point is good. That took just over 90 seconds. Southeastern will go 72 yards, 69 of which came of the pitch and catch. And we pause, 7-0 Savage Storm on the Bison Radio Network. At Oklahoma Baptist University, we'll help you find your passion in a community where your professors know you by name. We'll help you find your purpose by bringing faith and knowledge together through a Christian perspective. We'll help you find your future with a world-class education that prepares you for a successful career. We'll help you find a place to grow into who you were meant to be. Come grow with us. OBU, find your place. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Oklahoma now has more earthquakes than any other state in the union. Talk to your agent to make sure you have earthquake insurance. You need to protect your biggest investment. If your home has been damaged by an earthquake and your insurance company is refusing to pay your claim, you need to know your rights. You need a lawyer who has the resources and experience to take on those big insurance companies. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. and wait for somebody to bust a coverage certainly helps. Easily the longest play of the year for Southeast of their previous long was a skitter to Felton Hatcher 39-yard reception last week in the season opening 35-0 victory over Southern Nazarene. Joel Carlos, who like OBU Zach Clark a couple of years ago is one of the finalists for the Good Hands team sponsored by Allstate that includes all levels of college football. Zach, you might remember was uh, a finalist and was honored at the Sugar Bowl uh, two seasons ago as part of his senior season. It will not be Carlos. Instead, it's going to be Josh Davis, number 43, 205 pounds, 5'11", to boot it off into the wind, and this will be returned. To the near side, it's going to be Henderson at the 15. Out to the 20, Jitterbug's a tackler at the 21 to the 25, and then is shoved backwards. First down there on special teams for Southeastern was Jalon Freeman, and Freeman did indeed put a pop on Jacquez Henderson. I don't know if you were in on the conversation yet at that time or not, Scott, with Petty John, but he said, man, it does make a difference having Jacquez back this season. Oh, there's no doubt. And, and the punt returns that he did that he caught last week against East Central, he kept the ball from rolling. Some of those line drive kicks that the Tiger punter had would have rolled an extra 20 yards, made a huge difference on the kick return game. He averaged over 20 on kickoffs last week. He gets nearly 25 on that one. And OBU will start at the 26-yard line. And we have unsportsmanlike conduct called now against Southeastern. So instead of the 26, Brooksy, the line of scrimmage will be at the 41. I think, and I, I'm not sure, but, I'm, but the officials were talking. That may have been, they may have called a late hit. Uh, you said that there was a good pop, and there was a good pop from Jalon Freeman, but that pop may have come just late enough that the flags came out. So big break, they'll start at the 41. Uh, you know, in the horse racing business, sometimes you look for closers. 
They get behind early and close. Uh, this is what's going to happen this year, boys, after last week and now the start of this game. First, ten, first down and 10 of the 41-yard line. I'll give you an interesting stat here in just a moment. OBU's opponents are on a real tear in terms of flags against. OBU opens at a one-back set. Handoff goes to... Moss. That is Moss, who starts the ball game and tiptoes forward for a yard to the 42. Last week, East Central was penalized for 133 yards. That marked the third straight game dating back to week 10 last year. But OBU opponents have been penalized more than 10 times, and it has happened in four of the last five. Last year, OBU opponents easily the most penalized team in the conference. Second down and nine. First throw of the afternoon for Harris, caught by Jacquez Henderson, and he is tackled at the 44-yard line. Almost got out. Out of the tackle of Daquan Brown, who came up from corner. He is a senior from Los Angeles, California. Couldn't quite keep his footing, and it's going to be third down and long for Preston Herod Company. Yeah, last week the Bison got off to a bad start, too. They stopped the kickoff return that happened a year ago against East Central, and then the first play from scrimmage, they went 80 yards for a touchdown. Third down and seven, Oklahoma Baptist from their own 44-yard line. They motion Jock West, Henderson to the near side. Here comes the pressure. They float it out left of the ball incomplete. Over the head of the intended target that time. That was Darian Moss out of the backfield. But Preston Hare took a late hit. A flag is down. And I think we're going to see Zach Scott, who was an outside linebacker, an honorable mention all league selection from a year ago as a freshman out of Garland, Texas, called for Ruffy the passer. Well, that guys, that's just an absolutely silly penalty that will – make Bo Atterbury, the head coach, now in his fifth year down at Durant, furious. Well, you, you can do the math real quickly. The, this series was going to start at the 26. It started at the 41. Three plays later, it's going to end with a punt. And now the Bison are at the other 41 on the other side of the field, the Southeastern 41. Last year, Southeastern was flagged for 113 penalty yards in a win down at Durant, 21-17 over OBU. Already two flags against the Savage Storm for 30 yards of this one. They check out of the play. Air looks to the near side. First and 10, the line of scrimmage now at the Southeastern 41-yard line. Hinkley motions from right to left of the formation. Twins split both ways, a little throw out right, and the ball is caught by Noah McGraw, who turns up field and gets to the 35. Guys, you'll take that all day long at the 36. In talking to Grant Gower this week, he thought that maybe Scott Southeastern might be suspect on the slant pattern, much the way that South or East Central was a week ago. Right now, they're working the edge. With Cagney Roberson, he can get his body between any defender, and I think it'll work against anybody, as long, even Southeastern. Team. There's the slant. He's got McGraw, and he has a first down. He spun down at the 25-yard line, a quick 10-yard catch. The first of the day for Noah McGraw, who had two huge catches last week on one touchdown drive, one a third-down conversion, the other a fourth-down conversion. OBU quickly snaps the ball for the 25. Hare under pressure. Now he's going to take it and run. He pulls up, dumps it off across the way, and the ball is incomplete as he was looking that time for Jock West Henderson, who was well defended by the Hawaii. Hawaii native, Lufatata Sanga. Don't say that ten times too fast. I'm not saying it one time, even slow. I'm glad you I'm, I'm glad you had to say it. There was good double coverage right there. He had to thread that, that knee a little bit. Uh, was lucky that uh, he got a, he got the pass off in the first place. Second and ten for the 25. Hand off to Moss. He stacked up, tries to run out left, and he is corralled and dropped for a yard loss. To the 26. That front four, uh, three of Southeastern is very, very good. Tejuan Smith, 265, a senior, is at an end. Drew McBeth out of Midlothian, Texas, is the other end. And Jonathan Torres out of nearby Sherman, Texas, just short of the, uh, or just on the other side of the Red River from the Durant campus, a junior, really, really physical out there at nose tackle. Third down at 11. Bison are one of one on third downs thanks to a silly penalty against Southeastern roughing the passer early over this drive. Line of scrimmage at the Stavage Storm 26. 7 0 Southeastern early stages of this one. Hare to throw. Now the protection breaks down. Hare rolling right. Has all day long. He's got a receiver. And it is cut for the touchdown. Henderson. Jacquez Henderson was able to get separation. And that, folks, is exactly what Preston Hare does so well. Buying time. You're almost, almost Scott Wanish. Better off in taking your chances with him in the pocket. Because what happened there, Southeastern had a great pass rush. Hare got outside. When he got outside, the safeties came up, and Henderson got behind the safeties for the easy score. He did, and the freshman uh, 
DB on that play. Craddock also was trying to catch up on, on that play. But a great job, I mean a great job, to see him deep in the end zone and able to lay that ball in there. And I mean he laid it in. He still had a couple of yards to keep from going out of the back. Extra point is good. Window off to a four for four start. And OBU has answered the Southeastern touchdown drive. And we are tied at seven as we keep it right here. Guys, you know what I like about that? OBU this year, good enough to take advantage of the other guy's mistakes. And the Savage Storm gifted OBU two first downs of that drive. Hey, I got to say something. Our first quarter of action is being presented by our good friends, uh, David Huterberg and his longtime tradition and his family's tradition at Huterberg Auto Group in Oklahoma City. And uh, both Lisa and I can certainly atone to that because there's a brand new, good looking, leather clad Altima sitting in the driveway. And uh, we got it at uh, Huterberg Nissan. So always nice to talk about our all of our sponsors, certainly our Cornerstone sponsors, and Hudeberg Auto Group, certainly one of those. First touchdown catch of the year for Jacquez Henderson for Preston Hare. That is his second of the year as he continues to chase down Des DeGaul for the all-time most career passing touchdowns in school history. I'm going to tell you what, that is going to be erased in a, another week or two at this pace. I love the fact that Henderson is he, he's at about the five, and suddenly he breaks uh, loose from the two defenders, and that left hand goes up, and he's waving like mad, and Preston Harris is running to the right, and it's like they were on radar with each other, and suddenly it was, oh, okay, I can hear you in my iPod. Go ahead. I'll send it, and he did. 10.36 to go here in the first quarter. OBU will kick it off after a eight-play drive. Here is Wendell's kick, not his best effort with the window is back. And it is going to be again Cody that has the return. Sets up, running right, 10, down the numbers to the 15 to the 20, out across the 30 to the 35, and tackled near the 40-yard line. As a good return that time on special teams by Cody Norris, who is a 5'10", 172-pound redshirt freshman from Nimitz High School in Irving, Texas. There's another flag on the play that came out late and another good return by Southeastern. That's time they went around the right side. Uh, the initial kickoff return, they went up the middle that Vegas stopped. First penalty of the day upcoming against Oklahoma Baptist. And it's going to be a personal foul against OBU on the end of the run. Last week, OBU was penalized six times for 48 yards. We told you that the Bison, a year ago, their opponents were the most penalized per game in the conference. Southeastern and Northwestern both threw 113 yards and flags in their meetings with the Bison. OBU was the least penalized team in the conference one year ago. First down and 10, line of scrimmage at the 47 of OBU. 10.25 to go in the first quarter. Skinner and company go to work. He'll take to the air. Pocket holds again. He's got a receiver down the field. It's Sims. And he underthrew him at the five. Or it's a touchdown. Felipe Alvear, the safety that time, got hung up. And he closed. But it wouldn't have been in time. And fortunately, guys, OBU gets gifted a break. As Skinner's pass was a little short. And... Sims, who had beaten the coverage, couldn't quite haul it in. Those flags aren't growing, uh, flowing too much up there, but they were enough. There was enough wind that he had to throw into. It was the difference in a completion and a drop. Hand off this time over the right side. And that is Kenneth Burks, I believe. He's cut down after about a yard gain. It was actually Austin Skinner on a keeper, and he picks up a yard and a half just shy of the 45 of OBU, so it's going to be third down and long for Southeastern. Under 10 minutes to play here with the first quarter, game tied at seven. LVR got beat on a double move by Sims on that play, and it would have been an easy touchdown, just a halfway decent throw would have been a score for the Savage. Wins both left and right, and here comes the flag. Felton Hatcher moved just ever so slightly, and he did it right in front of the official of the far side, and that's going to cost Southeastern five yards in penalty. Oklahoma Baptist is 1-0. and They came back against East Central, and they're going to have to come back again today against Southeastern, and I don't know if that's a good uh, way to start every game. Third and 13, the line of scrimmage back at midfield for Southeaster. They need to get to the Bison 35-yard line. Burks and Skinner in the gun. Skinner guns it over the middle. The pass incomplete. As he was looking for a streaking Jalen Sims 
down the middle of the field. Sims, ironically, has been highlighted, guys, a lot. And one reason, because he's been able to get deep in coverage. But last week, he did not have a catch in making the start against Southern Nazarene. Well, Jalen Sims was wide open on a skinny post right there. They just weren't on the same page. A quarterback threw the ball. Sims had his back turned. On to punt is going to be Joel Carlos. Carlos last week punted three times for an average of 39-plus yards per punt. Stands back at the 37-yard line at southeastern side of the field. Takes one step. OBU came after it and almost blocked it. It hits at the 26, turns over, and rolls dead at the 23-yard line. Well, Joel Carlos was very, very fortunate. That punt was not blocked. Does a pretty good job on a wet turf, and OBU will start inside their own 25-yard line after a 24-yard punt by Joel Carlos. That's two weak kicks. The, the kickoff was a little pooch kick to the left side, and these punts are 24 yards. Is going to lose the kicking battle. 9-11 to go here in the first quarter. OBU goes to work offensively in a 7-7 ball game. They start at their own 23-yard line. Hare with two backs in the backfield. Goes from the shotgun, looks over a four-man front. He'll hand it off to the freshman Tyler Stieber who goes tiptoeing into the line of scrimmage. And as Tyler does so, a flag comes down from our referee, Joey Newsom. He is looking at Oklahoma Baptist. He threw it right into the line. So you would think that is in the vicinity of a hold. Emmanuel Adesicon, a wide receiver, was called for a block below the waist. And now OBU is going to be put inside their own 15-yard line, so the run will not count. It'll be first down and 25 upcoming for OBU. Joey Newsom is our referee. Kali Shaw is the umpire. Joe Croker is the head linesman. James Stevens is the line judge. Robert Spikowski is the field judge. The side judge is Rodney Davis, and the back judge is Richard Russ. That's your officiating crew as assigned by the Great American Conference for this week two home opener for OBU against Southeastern. Line of scrimmage back at the 14-yard line. So it's going to bring up first down and 24 for OBU. And the Bison were winning the penalty margin again, just like they did against East Central, but that's two personal fouls in the last two minutes. Tyler Stever is in the backfield, the freshman from Washington, a two-touchdown game, including the winner in overtime at East Central last week. He's offset to the left of Hare. Hare quickly looks right, now throws left, jumping high for the catch is Roberson. He makes the catch right at the previous uh, line of scrimmage at the 23-yard line, so it's going to bring up second down and 10, and there you can see that wasn't Roberson, but instead I think it was Noah McGraw. It was Roberson who went high in the air to make the catch. Same thing as last week. Roberson ran a, a just a slant in in his body. He keeps the defender on his back. Hare knows exactly where to throw it, where he can only catch it. Stever motions to the near side, empty backfield. They'll throw it for Tyler near side. Jitterbugs, two tacklers, tries to get a stiff arm, and he is run down at the 24-yard line. Man, gang tackling that time by Southeastern's defense. Zach Scott led the way. Connor, uh, Connor Swope, the redshirt freshman at inside linebacker, was there as well. And that's going to bring up third down and again long for OBU. What we saw last week from Stever. He never goes down with the first uh, tackle, and that time it did. It took two guys. The first guy wrapped him up, and another guy took him down. Tyler offset to the right of Hare from the gun. OBU on third down, two for two. One of those was earned via a penalty. Three receivers wide left. Here comes pressure off the edge. Hare stands tall, throws it out. Left ball intercepted. It's picked off by Larry Bridges. Down the sideline he goes to the 15. He's to the 10 and inside the 5 and tackle to the 3-yard line. That pass. Larry that pass was intended for Jacquez Henderson, and it was a jump ball. Henderson has got to be at least turned into a defender if he doesn't grab that ball, and he let the defender just take it away. There is a flag of the play. It was on the return, so Southeastern right now will start inside the five-yard line, and Brooksy is saying that there was a penalty against OBU on the tackle, a horse collar, so it'll be... It'll be half the distance to the goal line. It was Cagney Roberson, the wide receiver, making the tackle that got him inside the collar. I had the pick at the 38, guys. I might be wrong, but I think it was at the was he at the 38 or the 33. It may, it may have been at the 33. First down and goal to go. Southeastern with 7.48 to play here in the first quarter. 
Two backs in the backfield. Skinner will hand it off to Burks, cradling the football. Tries behind left guard. Can't get there. He's pushed back to the two. Good defense at the goal line by OBU. And the front four stacking him up that time. Lucas, Lolafia, Vickers, and Liebeshek, who had great games amongst the great defensive effort last week, leading that charge. And Landon Roulette got penetration to make the first contact to slow the play down. Second down and two. Southeastern last week in the red zone, five of seven. All five scores were touchdowns. Two backs in the backfield. They hand it straight ahead to Burks this time. Burks keeps his legs moving. He is hit at the one and fell over the goal line for the touchdown. That was just mano a mano with one of the Bison defenders, and he had just enough of those big, thick legs to get into the end zone. Big, thick legs is right. That was some power running because Landon Roulette stepped up in the hole and gave him a pop, had assistance, and they were trying to squeeze him, but those legs just powered over the goal line. Joel Carlos on for the extra point. He was all-conference a year ago. The all-time record holder for career extra points and field goals at Southeastern. All this at the north end, the snap is back, ball is down, kick is in the air, and it is good. So the turnover results in a quick strike score and Southeastern retakes a 14-7 lead. We'll pause, 7.03 to go in the first quarter of the Bison Radio Network. I'm attorney Noble McIntyre with McIntyre Law. If you've had a hip replacement surgery recently, you may have had an artificial implant with metal on metal contacts. If so, you may be experiencing pain or other side effects and you need to know your rights. Metal on metal hips have had significant problems and some have even been recalled. Know your rights. If you or someone you love needs our help, put your future in the hands of an experienced trial lawyer. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. I'm attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Did you know that an 18-wheeler outweighs your car 10 to 1? An 80,000 pound 18-wheeler can cause serious or fatal injuries to you and your family during collisions, and trucking companies need to be held. Last week, OBU with the first 15 minutes of play down at East Central was outscored 13 to 3, led though at halftime 17-13 after a two-score second period. Southeastern with just their second multi-score quarter of the year. They had 14 of the third period en route to a 35-0 whitewashing of Southern Nazarene last week at home. Carlos this time will kick off into the wind. Larry Bridges with the interception, his second of the year, has given Southeastern a 14-7 lead. Carlos with a deep pooch kick to the far side. It'll be fair caught at the 23-yard line. Waving his arms in the air was the no-water product, Seth Glasscock. And Glasscock did not need to fair catch that. He had 13 yards of grass in front of him when that ball landed in his chest. Officially at the 24s where OBU will start this drive. Seven minutes to play here in the first period. Along with John Brooks, Scott Wanish, I'm Todd Miller. And a flag has come in. And Southeastern is starting to retreat. Now, the flag is actually all the way back at the 35 where Carlos kicked off. So you would think maybe it was an offsides against Southeastern. It'll be interesting to see what... Okay, that's a fair catch. The rule is the ball is. We're going to put it at the 25 and then tack five yards on for the offsides call. It was against number 81, Michael Robert. So OBU will start at the 30 yard line. Down 14 to 7. Moss replaces Stever in the backfield. Wing right, two receivers to their side, one slot left. Handoff goes to. Moss and Darian doesn't have much to work with as he tries the left end and gets almost three out to the 33 yard line. Well, it's you look not at Moss, the... but it was actually Reuben Thompson, 26, the sophomore from Jinx, that carried the ball. Second down and seven of the 33 yard line. Thompson remains in the backfield. Southeastern showing blitz. And this time it's a Read pass option for the quarterback, Preston Hare. He slides across the 34 and comes to a stop at the 35, bringing it up third down and five. Great fake by Hare. Stuck the ball right in Thompson's stomach, pulled it out, had wide open running lane, and he took a slide early. As good of a runner as Hare is, I thought he might go down further. Wing left, single setback remains Thompson. Two receivers to the near side. Roberson is slots uh, short left. They're showing some pressure off the edge with Zach Scott. And now Preston Harris checking out of the play. 
Hare on third down and five. Gets a direct snap, throws it near sign, and it's caught for a first down of the 40-yard line, just beyond the 40-yard line as Josh Cornell made the reception, was working that time on the linebacker, Zach Scott. And OBU will keep the drive going. Perfect timing pattern on the out pattern. That uh, prayer just laid it right where the spot where Thompson was going. Bison are now three of four on third down conversions. And again, they were much improved in that category last week down at Ada. Wing left, same formation. Thompson back in there, gets a fake handoff. They throw it over the middle of the ball, too high, incomplete. Was off the intended target or the intended, uh, it was off the intended target. I believe that again was uh, Cornell. It was, and the ball sailed in here, almost was picked off. It's a good thing that uh, the receiver got the hand on the ball. That was actually tight end Seth Glasscock that tipped that back. Otherwise, that was another interception right in the safety's arms. It was Glasscock. You're right. Second and 10 to the 40-yard line. Twins both left and right. One back set. Ball on the near side. Hash, 14-7 Southeastern. Hinkley on a reverse. Gets the pitch. Comes near side and picks up six as he tiptoes his way out of bounds into the OBU bench at the 46-yard line. Ushered out of bounds by Luke Craddock. And they're... I thought there was a flag. There's yes. not, Brooksy. There is. Oh, while they talk it over, I'll tell you that your drama there on the pitch actually turned out to be a pretty neat little tip, didn't it? You, he's coming right across, and he just kind of tipped the ball. It's just straight up in the air, and he just took it right down, ran with it. But unfortunately, there's going to be a holding call, and this one is going back for OBU. As generous as Southeastern has been, guys, today in helping OBU with penalties, OBU has shot themselves in the foot. It'll be third down. And 16, the line of scrimmage back at the 34-yard line. It'll actually be second down at the 34. The play does not stand if the foul is taken. Played less than 10 minutes, guys. There's been a lot of generosity out there on both sides of the ball. 5-12 to go here in the first period. 14-7 Southeastern. Two receivers left and right. Thompson to the back in the backfield with Preston Air. Southeastern showing pressure. They motion man to the far side. Here comes the pressure. Hare picks it up, dumps it down the middle of the field. It's tipped and caught. It was tipped by the defensive back that time and fluttered right into the hands of Cagney Roberson, who goes down at the 35-yard line. Jeremiah Baltrip was the one, a sophomore from Colleyville, Texas, that was the one that tipped the football right into the winning arms. Not everybody can do that, have that kind of uh, concentration when it's tipped. Roberson did have it. 30 yards and a first down on second and long for OBU. Hare to throw again, throws out left, and the ball is caught as it was hauled in that time by Nick Hinckley on a short gainer. He'll pick up almost three to the 32. Major error by ball trip there. Ball right in his hands was actually underthrown by Hare. Easy interception. Pops it right up to Roberson. Nick Hinckley with the catch. Last week, Hinckley was one of nine receivers to catch at least one pass from Preston Hare. Hinckley motions for left to right of the formation. They fake the inside handoff. Now Hare is going to keep it. 30 with running room to the 25, and he slides down. Now they're spotting it just shy of the 25, which means instead of a first down, it's going to be third down and less than a yard for Oklahoma Baptist as we approach four minutes to go in the first quarter. Southeastern leading 14-7. The fake handoffs by Hare are excellent. Half the line goes the opposite way, and Hare gets wide open running room. High snap. Hare handles it, throws it out left. Hinkley with a catch, bangs his way to a first down. At the 21-yard line, needed one, got five. And, well, this offense, guys, right now is in sync against a good, good defense from Southeastern. And they've really set up the deep pass. They're throwing these short passes. Roberson was actually behind the defense on the, on the interception attempt. One back set, offset to the left. Two receivers left and right. Hare to throw from the 30. Throw it over the middle. Has a receiver caught at the goal line for a touchdown. Holy Toledo. Dylan Smith was the recipient of that strike from Preston, who's thrown for a pair at OBU again. An extra point away from a tie. What we talked about, Josh Pettyjohn, who's not playing today, finds the seam in the zone right there. The receiver finds was patient, finds the hole in the zone for a wide open touchdown. That is the first career catch for Dylan Smith, a third year player from Keller, Texas. Here is the extra point by Wendell. It's on the way, and it is good. Easily clearing the hospitality tents. You know at the what? South End, we are tied at 14. You know what? If you're if you got to wait for a while to get that first catch, why not just go in the end zone with it, right? That will be a great memory for Dylan Smith when he's a grandfather. He'll be telling that story for a long, long time. Listen, on that drive, four different receivers 
involved in that march up field. Preston playing uh, best buddy to four different guys on that drive. Well, as I talked about before that touchdown strike, nine different players, Smith being one for three yards on his only catch last week at East Central, nine different players were used in the pass game. Five of those had multiple catches. Scott, we have talked about this a lot, buddy. The weapons that is at Grant Gower and Preston Hare's disposal, something to behold. All right, we got a we, we got a little bit of a uh, nice mark with the, the the scoreboard's out. Scoreboard's out. Yes. No, it isn't. They're running ads. Oh, they're running ads. Okay. <laughs> well, I I really got lost. For, uh, there we go. I'm trying to tell you that with 3:38 to go in the first quarter, the uh, Bison have 17 more yards of total offense than Southern Nazarene had last week and four against the Southeastern team. Yeah, Southeastern did not give up a point last week. In four quarters, they have given up two now on three drives against Preston Hare with the Bison offense. Here's Luke Wendell, the kick with a wind to his back. It's about 10 miles per hour out of the north. And he approaches. This one hangs up near side. And it is going to be returned again to the boundary at the 17 by Norris. Up the boundary to the 25. And he's hit near the 30-yard line out of bounds into the OBU bench. So they're kicking away from Michael Robert. It's been Co Cody Norris now who has three returns of the day for the Savage Storm. And we're deadlocked at 14 with trip threes to go in the first period. The Savage Storm starting at the 30-yard line. That's uh, three kickoffs and excellent field position for Southeastern every time. The Bison are going to have to get down there and, and penetrate that wedge. No tight ends in this package. Two receivers both left and right. One back set is Kenneth Burks, and Skinner will hand it off to Burks. Coming left, tried to cut inside, slipped, and down he goes. Had he not slipped, it wouldn't matter because Lane Martin, who's out there now for Weisinger, an inside linebacker, redshirt sophomore from Stratford, Oklahoma, was there and ready to drop him to the wet turf. What a sound tackle by Lane Martin. He didn't go for any jukes. He didn't try to hit him high, hit him right around the knees and just squeezed and pulled him down for a yard loss. Burks in his southeastern career, 93 carries coming in, just under 500 yards. He has a touchdown today. That is his seventh down to Durant, loses two to the 28, second and 12. Skinner to throw, throws it out right, passes high, it's caught by Sims, and closing quickly to knock him to the ground. Landon Rollette. It is Landon Rollette. And Good play. That, that's two, a loss of the previous play back, and it's third and 10. Rollette has really been jumping up to the line of scrimmage uh, from his outside position. Third down and 10 for Southeastern. They are one of two on third down tries here with this opening quarter. 2.19 to play, 14-14 our score. Now the Savage Storm checking with the offensive coaching staff at the east side of the stadium. A late but a good arriving crowd here for the home opener. Back to throw a skinner for the 22-yard line. Has time, throws a slant, it's low, and it is caught. Good catch that time by Braxton Kincaid. He was able to get his hands underneath it, or at least that's what they're saying. OBU is reacting, and now the officials are going to get together, and we're going to get a conference. There's a flag in the backfield. Okay, it's a personal foul. Shot block against Brennan Hardison, who is a backup right tackle, 310 pounds, and a sophomore from Garland, Texas. Kyle McCrory is the tackle. Lejeune Cooper started to tackle as well. Matt Morris and Kevin Gray are the guards and Jeff Davis up front for the offensive line coming in averaging 284 yards. So the play Guards, 284 pounds, pounds okay. per, per man. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Thank you. That's all right. I Listen, I thought maybe we had changed the what, the monetary value? Was that it? Huh? Hey, it's our rules. We can make it. Yeah, you can, we can do play whatever however we want, we want that's, to. That's why you're in the in the number one seat over there. And you know what? Yeah, they don't like it. No listen. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you don't want to. You don't want to weigh yards. <laughs> then don't listen. Third and twenty-one at the nineteen. Skinner to throw. Pocket holds. Dumps it over the middle. He's got Burks at the twenty. Out of contact at the twenty-one, and then manages to struggle up to the twenty-five. He's still going to be well short of the needed yardage to gain. And OBU's defense has held Brooksy. Your first look at the vice at almost 15 minutes. Much, much different football team on both sides, isn't it? Yeah, much, much different. I, I tell you this, those people that are sitting in the stands, they have to be excited right now. There were times last year at this point in the first quarter, it was a dull, almost a dozy feeling. 
not here. You got 28 points on the board between the two teams, and there's still a minute 20 left in the quarter. Carlos gets a high snap, gets a leg into it. The wind knocks it down. End over end, hits at the 48-yard line. Now rolls laterally and will roll down at the 47. So he will get a 28-yard punt. No return. And OBU with outstanding starting field position, guys, in a 14-14 ball game. Look for Hare and Grant Gower to air it out with just 70 seconds remaining with the wind of their back. I think they've got the deep pass set up. Uh, Southeastern's been biting on a lot of the short passing game and some of the run. Roberson, get behind him. Got it. Edith Khan in there. Dylan Smith. Tyler Stever will be in the backfield. We've seen Thompson, Stever, and Darian Moss alternate in there at running back. Four receivers, now five as they empty the pocket. They'll throw it out left to Tyler. Needing a block, cuts right at the 50. Tyler down to the 47-yard line. He's banged down there by the outside linebacker, Zach Scott. Jonathan Torres was there as well. That's an unprotected swing pass to Stever left. No blockers. That was all him. By turning up field so quickly, got five yards. Second down and five. We're under a minute to play here for the first quarter in a 14-14 game. Pistol formation with Stever out there behind Hare. They actually hand it off to Eli Paul, who's out there now. Paul running behind left guard John Kent Calhoun. We'll get two to the 46. The flag comes in. Let's hunt the brakes and see what this infraction is. They threw it right into the line of scrimmage. This crew has been busy throwing flags here in the first half. And then last week we saw against East Central, the Bison have been very disciplined, but not so much today. The banking team you can count on is the First National Bank and Trust Company, your bank for life. SSM Health St. Anthony Hospital Shawnee has a game plan to keep you healthy. Visit SSMHealth.com. Holding penalty against uh, Mason Grosser, a freshman who's out there now at left guard. And so the line of scrimmage back at the 44 in OBU's into the field. It's going to bring up second down and 13. Wing right, play action pass. Hare throws it out right, and the ball knocked away incomplete. He was looking that time for Noah McGraw and read well by Luke Craddock, the corner. Nice protection by Brian Cornell there to make a bubble for Hare just to get that pass off. So third down and 13, OBU at their own 44-yard line. Clock stops with the incompleted pass. 26 seconds to play here in the first quarter. We're tied at 14. Eli Paul, the redshirt freshman from Ardmore, is the single setback. Bunch formation right in the slot left is Roberson. Here comes the pressure again by Southeastern. And again, OBU checking out of the play. Back to throw his hair. He'll zing it over the middle, and it's caught. A diving reception by Dylan Smith at the 48-yard line. He only picks up six, so it's going to bring up fourth down and seven with 14 seconds and counting to go here in the first quarter. And OBU is going to take a timeout. They're going to talk about it. They're also doing it to preserve the precious few seconds left here for this first quarter with the wind to their back. Next week, Arkansas Tech comes in for the final game of a back-to-back -back homestand. And then two weeks from today, at last year's national semifinalist, Harding in Searcy. Harding last week threw all of three passes in blistering Henderson State of the road. So they're back to their old ways, and it is a winning formation for Paul Simmons and company in Searcy. Dylan Smith at 5'6". He catches everything, touches his hands. He's two for two. You talked about his first career catch being a touchdown. Right there on the crossing pattern, he dove, outstretched, nailed the ball inside in a dive and pulled it in. Hayden Ashley last week averaged 39-plus yards per punt. Five of his six were inside the 20-yard line. Hayden on for his first punt of the afternoon. He'll stand back at the 36-yard line. And now Southeastern is going to spend a timeout with 10 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Bison football this afternoon brought to you by P&K Equipment. They have a longstanding reputation for, for providing solutions with honesty, courtesy, and a sense of urgency. Their parts and service availability are unsurpassed by the competition. You'll discover the ultimate John Deere experience at P&K Equipment, and you'll find out why around here John Deere starts with PNK. 
Bison fans, you can show your OBU spirit in Rep Carip with officially licensed bison apparel from shopobubison.com. Shopobubison.com is the official online store of OBU athletics and the only place online to buy OBU apparel, accessories, gifts, and much more with purchases benefiting bison athletics. Hayden Ashley, who averaged less than 34 a punt a year ago, much improved to the opener. In punt formation, as we told you, back at the 36-yard line. Southeastern will have seven along the line of scrimmage to put some pressure on. Snap floats back. Ashley with that rugby-style kick, kicks it end over end, hits at the 20, takes a big hop inside the 10, down to the five-yard line, and it is going to roll out of bounds at the two. Boy, that is as perfect as you can get with the Coffin quarter kick. 50 four yards on the Hayden Ashley punt that is only seven shy of a career best against Arkansas Tech here two years ago. 15 minutes in the book so this Saturday afternoon the second weekend of college football on Bison Hill at the end of one Southeastern and OBU tied at 14 on the Bison Radio Network. Trade it in for more and buy it for less. At Hudeberg Chevy in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Chevys for less. And you'll get payments that fit any budget. HudebergGN.com. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Oklahoma now has more earthquakes than any other state in the union. Talk to your agent to make sure you have earthquake insurance. You need to protect your biggest investment. If your home has been damaged by an earthquake and your insurance company is refusing to pay your claim, you need to know your rights. You need a lawyer who has the resources and experience to take on those big insurance companies. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. We saw last week the kicking game have a big uh, say in the game with the missed extra points by East Central. East uh, Southeastern this week has short kickoffs and short punts, and if Hayden Ashley can kick a coffin corner like that, the kicking game just may pull out for a win again this week. Skinner is going to be about four yards deep in the pistol formation in his own end zone. Southeastern now will move from north to south, left to right. OBU with a four-man defensive front. They go with a tight end, Kyle Ramage, the senior from Cypress, Texas. He'll motion to the far side, and they give it that way to Burks. Burks bangs his way out across the five and bucks his way to the seven-yard line. OBU doing a good job at the point of attack, something that Chris Jensen said at least in the first half last week didn't do a particularly great job of the road win at East Central. If you want an assessment, you look at the statistics, total offense, 149 yards for Oklahoma Baptist, 88 for Southeastern, and remember this, 69 of that came on the touchdown pass. Five-yard gain for Burks, who's been busy. Again, Ramage motions to the near side. Again, it's Burks cradling the football tight. He has some running room, almost broke, and he's out across the 15 and tripped up and flipped head over heels at the 18-yard line. He got 11, and guys, this is exactly what if you're Brandon Morris and Chris Jensen, you don't want to see happen. Southeastern trying to shift field position. On the previous play, Felipe Al Alviar came up and made the tackle, but nobody was there that time. Hand off again to Burks, who's been the workhorse, and he goes for the 19 out to the 24, so he'll get five more. Southeastern last year against OBU averaged five yards per carry. The Bison on the ground against the Savage Storm, that near miss down at Durant, averaged a season best six yards per carry. Lane Martin on the tackle that time from the linebacker position to slow slow down the running back. Burks already has eight carries. He'd netted just eight yards, but had a touchdown in the first quarter. He's had a big hand in trying to flip field position here. Play action pass, Skinner throws it out left. Sky low leaps for the catch at the 24, or make that the 34, and is tackled immediately at the 35. Low with his first catch of the season. I think I incorrectly said something. Jalen Sims had five catches last week, 27 yards and a touchdown. It was Low that was shut out in the season opener against Sky, uh, Southern Nazarene. First and 10 at the 35-yard line, so they gained 33 uh, yards in field position. Burks up the middle, stumbles across the 40 and out to the 41-yard line. Six more for the Savage Storm, who in the first quarter Ran for just 10 yards on six carries. John told you total offense 149 for OBU, 88 for Southeastern. Well, you make adjustments. That's what the game's all about. And obviously the coaches up here in the booth for Southeastern have seen something because uh, you just gave that count of yardage on the ground in the, in the first quarter. They were moving the ball, running inside. 
very effectively here on this drive. Pistol formation, four receivers, three to the near side. They'll flip it out left for Sims on a screen. OBU fights off the block, and Sims is able to get five at a first down to the 45-yard line. Wanish, I think that's exactly what they were hoping to get out of that play. Exactly. Uh, is a, a delayed screen, and they had blockers in front, and he just barely got across the line. I think I just called you Wanish. Have you been called that since you were like eight years old by your parents when you were in trouble? I meant to call you Juan <laughs> Dog. Now they call me Scott Michael. Yeah, they call you a legend at Choctaw. <laughs> I saw it last night. First to 10 of the 45. Motion man is Ryan Rotsis, the tight end of the far side. Give again to Burke, or that's not Burke, but Ivory. Ryan Taylor. And Taylor falls forward for about a yard and a half, close to the 47-yard line. Taylor is a sophomore from Lindale, Texas. Ten carries, 32 yards last week at home against Southern Nazarene. Kept the Savages to just two yards on that play instead of the big five- and eight-yard chunks. Lane Martin, incidentally, having a great game. He was the leading tackler. Three and a half stops in the first 15 minutes of play today for OBU. Two receivers left and right, empty backfield. They look right, throw it out left on the slant. The ball's caught. That is Kincaid at the 50-yard line, and he's up to the 46 of OBU. And that will be about the length of the football, shy of a first down for Southeaster. They'll snap it on third down and very, very short. Well, a mighty good defender, Robert Lolafia, almost had that, that receiver, and he would have been shy by about four yards. Now it's got about a foot for uh, the first down with this third down coming up. He was able to get loose from Lolafia. That's the difference between a third and four and a third and inches. Third and inches, ball just shy of the Bison 45-yard line. And now the head linesman comes in and will blow the play dead. It's a timeout, Southeastern. 11 2 to play, first half. We are tied at 14 on the Bison Radio Network. The second quarter of action brought to you by Oklahoma. I'm attorney Noble McIntyre with McIntyre Law. If you've had a hip replacement surgery recently, you may have had an artificial implant with metal-on-metal -metal contacts. If so, you may be experiencing pain or other side effects, and you need to know your rights. Metal-on-metal -metal hips have had significant problems, and some have even been recalled. Know your rights. If you or someone you love needs our help, put your future in the hands of an experienced trial lawyer. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Oklahoma now has more earthquakes than any other state in the union. Talk to your agent to make sure you have earthquake insurance. You need to protect your biggest investment. If your home has been damaged by an earthquake and your insurance company is refusing to pay your claim, you need to know your rights. You need a lawyer who has the resources and experience to take on those big insurance companies. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. Third down and less than a yard out of the timeout. Skinner turns and gives it to Burks behind right guard. He has a first down. He didn't need much, and he didn't get much. Maybe a full yard to the 44, and this is a disappointing drive put together defensively by OBU. They had defensive field position. They have simply taken their foot off of the neck of Southeastern. The Bison had the resistance at the line. And last week, you know, after Calandus Colton, they went after Calandus Colton, but he's playing press coverage, and I don't think any, he's allowed a pass yet. Ronson's motions to the far side, sweeping left is Burks, cuts inside, 40, down the numbers to the 35, 30, breaks a tackle, could go, 25, 20, 15 to the 10, and he's run down at the seven-yard line. Kenneth Burks on a sweep left was patient enough, Scott, to wait for his blocks. And then once he did, he literally walked down the numbers for about 15 yards before cutting right. Yeah, Matthew Tiger had a game uh, touchdown saving tackle there, and he did everything he could to try to strip that ball. He took a big tomahawk on the left side, but Burks just held on tight. Line of scrimmage at the seven yard line. So it's a 37 yard, yeah, 37 yard run for Kenneth Burks. Two backs in the backfield, Ronces and Ryan Taylor. Taylor gets the handoff, cuts left, gets out of contact in the backfield, is inside the five, still going. He's down to the three-yard line. Yeah, that initial penetration by the Bison, they're going to have to bring that the running back down or wrap up and slow down for pursuit to come help. Line of scrimmage at the three, so he got four. It's going to bring up second down and goal to go. Our second quarter of action of the Bison Radio Network brought to you by the OBU Graduate and Professional Studies. 
A lot of blockers out there for Southeastern. This drive started again at their own two. It's now at the Bison three-yard line. Empty backfield for Austin Skinner. Motion man to the near side is Kincaid. Skinner will keep it himself, is hit and flipped towards the goal line. They're spotting him down just outside the goal line. That was Matthew Tigert again with a touchdown saving tackle just in three plays. Matthew Tigert had a good game last week down at eight as a result. The redshirt junior from Holiday, Texas being rewarded with his first start of the year today at Cat Safety. Crowd trying to urge the Bison on to the home gray, white, green, and gold uniforms. New look for OBU this season. Third and goal to go, the ball near the goal line. Power eye package, hand off to Burks, leaps over the top, he's in for the touchdown. Man, oh man, Brandon Morris, Scott, when you talk to him at halftime, is still going to be steaming about the fact his defense allowed an opponent to go 98 yards right down the field. Yeah, the tackling just isn't there on the initial contact. Give it up to the southeastern running backs. These guys are strong and have strong legs, but somebody's going to have to slow down on the initial contact and help pursuit, let pursuit come. Joel Carlos on for the extra point. Blanton will hold it, this to make it a 21-14 lead. Snap of the way, it's down. Kick is in the air, and the extra point is good. So Southeastern goes 98 yards, and they do it in almost seven minutes. In fact, six and a half minutes to be exact, and lead 21 to 14. 831 to play here in the first half. We're back in a moment on the Bison Radio Network. Trade it in for more, buy it for less. It's that easy. At Hudeberg Buick GMC in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Buicks and GMCs for less. HudeberGM.com. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Oklahoma now has more earthquakes than any other state in the union. Talk to your agent to make sure you have earthquake insurance. You need to protect your biggest investment. If your home has been damaged by an earthquake and your insurance company is refusing to pay your claim, you need to know your rights. You need a lawyer who has the resources and experience to take on those big insurance companies. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. Ouch. Kenneth Burtz now has back-to-back -back two touchdown games, capping that drive at a one-yard run. Harlow the kick, and it's 21-14. to 14. Now the Onus guy shifts back on the offense. Well, to make a little follow-up from that uh, commercial I just got through doing, uh, the defense needs to find their place. People need to find their place and uh, be in the right place, not only to get that first initial uh, stop, but also to be in the right place so that uh, that runner's not there in the first place, right? Yes, in Southeastern. They By the way, very well played. And those they set up that. Uh, drive by run and then the short pass across the middle. So now I'm kind of concerned about uh, getting behind the secondary again like they did early in the game. Well, again, it's going to be Josh Davis to kick off. This will be his second kickoff of the afternoon. He spots it at the 35 of the window is back, and this is a good effort. And that will sail through the back of the end zone on one hop and be a touchback at OBU. We'll start at the 25-yard line. Preston Hare last week. Threw the football 49 times. That may go by the wayside today. Those 49 times were the second most attempts in his career. His 315 passing yards in Ada last Thursday night. A new career high by two yards, surpassing the 313 he had in the loss at Northwestern at Alva in week 10 of last season. It's number two all time in the Division II era for a single game. First and 10, Bison at the 25-yard line. 8.31 to play here in the first half. Three receivers to the near side, one split wide right. And a handoff will go to Darian Moss. There was a hole, but it closed very quickly as Connor Swope stepped in there at the inside linebacker spot and just twisted him down. Give him about three to the 28. Going to bring up second and seven. Approaching eight minutes to go in the first half. 21-14 Southeastern. You're right. There was a hole there for Moss. He got three yards, but if he just cut off the block, he could have got maybe three more. Moss is the single setback. Two receivers both left and right. They have two, two in the slot, in fact. Hare to throw. Dumps it over the middle. Ball caught, but hit immediately at the 29-yard line. Good pass protection by Brian Cornell again at the right tackle position when the end was really trying to put pressure in on Hare. Cornell kept him open, kept a pocket. Nick Hinckley was the one on the receiving end of that pass. He took a pop, but it's going to bring up third down and five. 
That was his second or third read right there because Cagney Roberson was his first thought. Roberson had enough protection from Daquan Brown that he elected not to go with him. Three receivers short right, one to the near side is Roberson. He's been held in check, one catch thus far in the ball game. On third and five, they look for Cagney and a slant over the middle, and it's tipped away. Daquan Brown got his hands in and tipped the ball away from Cagney. You don't think he picked up that in film study this week. And the umpire was looked like he was reaching for his flag, but he decided not to pull it out. It looked like he got hit just a hair early, but uh, overall a good defensive play by Southeast. I was going to say I have no problem with them putting the hanky in the back pocket, or in this case, leaving it in the back pocket. Michael Roberts set to return. Hayden Ashley, who had a 57-yarder, on his last punt, will punt into the wind for the first time from his own 16. Runs right, gets a leg into it, hits at the 35, bounces up to the 32, and Robert on a dangerous dive falls on the football at the 33-yard line. So another good punt that time by Hayden Ashley, and now it's up to the defense to keep this a one-score game. You know, that was a 35-yard punt that almost turned into a gift. Uh, I, I, I think you'd want a punt returner to make that play every time because I think if you did it 10 times, you might have the football seven times. That was a, He was very, very fortunate when he dove for that ball that that didn't pop free. And if had, Bison would have had it. It didn't. And now we get a situation where Southeastern State has the football and they have the lead. And we'll see now what the defense can do because now you're looking at, at that scenario where you need to get the ball back for your offense and get a chance to get back even in the game and not let a two-possession game suddenly uh, stare you on the board. Official stoppage of play. It's immediate timeout. We'll keep it right here. Southeastern leading midway through the second quarter, 21-14. to 14. At the First National Bank and Trust Company, our team is committed to yours. Visit our MacArthur or Fire Lake branch locations for more details about our products and services or check us out online at fnbokla.com. That's the First National Bank and Trust Company, your bank for life, member FDIC. Ready to go, Kenneth Burks, who has two touchdowns on the board, opens in a pistol formation as the single setback. They have a tight end, Ronces lined up to the press box side, a second, Ramage lined up slot right, motions wing left. Give that way to Burks, and he blasts out across the 35 to the 37-yard line. A gain of four, and that's been the problem. They're not, with the exception of a couple runs, guys, ripping off long runs. They are just chewing up the clock, averaging about five or six yards per snap on the ground. Good gang tackling by the Bison that time, but three or four yards a pop is not going to stop a drive. 6.38 to play here with the first half. Todd Miller, John Brooks, Scott Wanish with you on the Bison Radio Network. Burks empties the backfield, lines up wing right. They'll motion Sims to the far side. Snap coming back from Davis to Skinner. Now again it's Sims who motions this way. They hand him off on a jet sweep, and he's drug down. He is drug down at the 38-yard line, and you know who it was? Gabe Meisinger that blew that play up. He initially was the first to get to the scene and grab him by the jersey. And Casey Roulette came out and forced that run inside as well. How about Landon? Parker? Landon Roulette. I know a guy named Casey Roulette. You do? Yes. He's probably there last night in honor of you. <laughs> Six minutes to go, first half, third down at five at the 38-yard line. Now they're going to check out of this play. Southeastern of the first quarter on third down conversions was just one of three. OBU was three of five. Southeastern on their touchdown drive of 98 yards was two of two. Direct snap. Skinner will throw it over the middle. The ball tipped away incomplete. And, boy, that looked like it was very early contact. It, uh, it was early. It was early contact. By Landon Roulette. I'm not sure it was Roulette. I thought it was uh, – I thought Meisner actually – had his arms around him. Bottom line is, it was early. It was early contact. That that could have been a flag. Bison get. I think they got away with one right there. And I'm going to tell you what. Both did a good job of getting up and selling that because they were both waving their arms like an incomplete <laughs> yeah, pass. Right. Well, okay. And the umpire reached for his flag again, but didn't pull it out. Well, so. he can. It's yeah. it's pinned in there. That's <laughs> why he didn't get it out on the other punt. <laughs> to punt. The average is 27 on his prior two. Here comes the pressure, and it's a fake. And he has got all sorts of running room. A first down across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Boy, you can see that one coming all the way from here as he will scramble 
for nine yards and convert on fourth down on a fake punt. No containment on left end. The way Southeastern set up that play, they sent the, the cover man down to pull the corner back, and there was nobody for the Bison on the right side of their defense. First down and 10 to the 46-yard line. 5.34 to go here in the first half, and you know what that is, guys? That's a sign of respect for the OBU offense. Coach Atterbury knows that a touchdown lead probably is not going to survive in this ball game. I, I think it's respect as well as they saw something on film from last week when they played East Central. Good point. There's been a personal foul called against OBU. They tack 15 more on, and the ball now rests at the Bison 39-yard line. That is just disastrous. You give up a gain on fourth down, a fake punt to keep the drive alive, and now 15 more puts the possession in OBU's into the field. Six, six penalties, 102 yards. Pistol formation, Skinner hands it off to Burks, cracking his way behind left guard, is stacked up just shy of the OBU 35-yard line. So give him about four. That's one of his shortest runs at about a quarter now. We speak of Kenneth Burks with the exception of his one-yard touchdown flip to cap the last scoring series of 98 yards for the Savage Storm. And on that play, Burks was really tiptoeing. He's more of a power runner, but looking for a little hole, some of the stunning that the Bison were doing on the line. My singer, the redshirt senior at their middle linebacker from Claremore made the stop. They'll motion a man, that is the tight end, Ryan Rontzis, and now he motions back to the near side. They hand it, sweeping right is Burks. He ran into a defender and down he goes. You know who that was? Josh Arnold. One of the four captains, one of two that are underclassmen, and he just said, no, thank you, sir. I'm going to get to you this time, and you're going to lose about a yard to exactly. half. Exactly. Josh Arnold from the linebacker position, a perfect angle. He took the shortest angle possible to come across, dodging blockers and just drilling the running back. 419 to play here with the first half. OBU down 21-14. to 14. They have forced Southeastern into a third and long. Third and a long seven at the OBU 38-yard line. Perhaps two down territory for Southeastern. Back to throw is the quarterback Skinner. Almost sacked. Now circles back to his own 48. Throws left. Ball incomplete. Off the fingertips of Jalen Sims. And fortunately, that pressure for Skinner to be a little bit off the mark, one dog, because, again, Jalen Sims was open right at the first down marker. Yes, he was wide open. Jonah Levichek almost had the quarterback, took a dive, just couldn't reach him. Hey, that's a tough, tough throw, and he almost pulled it off. Almost pulled it off, running hard to his left, trying to come back across the body, and he had to throw low, too. Uh, he just came up short. It'll be fourth and nine. They're going for it. As expected last year, Southern Nazarene was 60, or excuse me, Southeastern, 62% on fourth down tries. 10 of 16, and now they're going to take a timeout. Line of scrimmage at the Oklahoma Baptist 37-yard line. While we have a moment, we'll remind you that our second quarter of action this afternoon is brought to you by the Oklahoma Baptist University College of Graduate and Professional Studies. Next week, Arkansas Tech here, 1 o'clock, 12.30, our pregame start on the Bison Radio Network. While we have a moment, let's step aside for stations along the network to identify themselves. This is Bison Football on the Bison Radio Network. At Oklahoma Baptist University, we'll help you find your passion in a community where your professors know you by name. We'll help you find your purpose by bringing faith and knowledge together through a Christian perspective. We'll help you find your future with a world-class education that prepares you for a successful... Last week against East Central... The Tigers were 0 of 1 on fourth down tries. OBU was 3 of 3. A year ago, Oklahoma Baptist defense, guys in this very similar situation, had a lot of trouble getting off the field. It's fourth and long, almost eight full yards. Ball rests at the Bison 37 yard line. They need to get to the 29. One back set is Burks. Here comes the crowd. No, it's a good opening day crowd. They were a little late in arriving because of the weather, but. They're trying to urge the Bison on. Four-man defensive front. Now Skinner backpedals as he gets the snap, and it's going to be a pooch kick. And it is not a good punt at all. It hit the 20, but he's going to get a roll out of it. And that ball looked like it was headed for the sideline, and it took a little left turn. And two big bounces are going to be down at the seven-yard line. 31 yards on the punt. And that might have been one of the more bizarre-looking 31-yard punts you'll ever see. OBU was able to give up field position 
to Southeastern's offense. Let's see if the Bison can do it on this possession. Yep, Southeastern used the quick kick where the quarterback just faked the pass and kicked it where there would be no return. And as you said, the ball just rolled forward all the way down to the seven and a half yard line. Southeastern, the highest ranked team of the preseason conference coaches, Paul. They were preseason ranked fourth. Pistol formation, hand off to Moss, running left, can't get out of an ankle tackle, and he's tripped up for a loss of one. Daquan Brown came up from corner and got him at the six-yard line. Brown, Brown just made a great play, open field tackle, but Moss, you know, watching last week, too, he's not getting off the ball like we thought in 2017 that he, he brought, would get free. 331 to play here for the first half. OBU down a touchdown to Southeastern at home, 21 to 14. This has been, for the most part, despite an 0-3 ledger against Southeastern, a pretty competitive series in the last three meetings. Hare to throw on play action pass, throws it out left to Roberson, who makes the catch at the 10, and then is waltzed out of bounds right there. He's going to pick up four, so it's going to bring up third down and seven, and that will stop the clock as Cagney was hit out of bounds on just his second catch of the day. Looked like a little safe play by the Bison, just a quick square out. Cagney Roberson last week, a nice game in his senior debut at East Central. Seven catches, 122 yards. One back set, play action pass, back to throw. Hare looking deep right, and the ball was underthrown. It's tipped and knocked away, and here comes a flag. I don't know if that was offensive pass interference. I was just getting ready to say, don't get too excited, because Luke Craddock, who was at corner for Mount Pleasant, Texas, looked like he had inside position against the intended receiver that time, Nick Hinckley. Hinckley did a great job being a defensive back because he did not have position as the offensive receiver, for sure. They are pointing the way of Southeastern. My, wow. oh, my, would this be a huge break for OBU. Underthrown pass, Hinkley comes back to break it up, and huge break, you're right. What a day on Bison Hill, the Lady Bison volleyball team at the Noble Complex hosting day two of the MIAA. GAC crossover matches last night, OBU went one and one, losing a five center to Emporia State and defeating Missouri Southern State in three sets. It is pass interference against Luke Craddock. Whew. And that was the field judge through that flag. We were talking about the umpire holding his uh, flags in the middle of the field, but the field judge from way back came and threw that from behind. What a break for the Bison. On I think first. if I'm on the other side, I'm probably uh, yelling in the ear of that field judge. Tyler Stevers in the backfield, offset to the right. Now he motions to the far side, one of four receivers that way. It's a draw play. Preston Air across the 30, took a shot late, and here comes the flag at the 31-yard yep. line. Preston Hare gave himself up, and he got hit when he slid. When you slide, you get the quarterback cannot be hit. And you get to say the funny name again. Lua Fataga Sanga was the one that came in, and I'll tell you what, he was very, very close to uh, being called for targeting on that hit. It's going to be a first down for OBU. Last week, Scott, you might remember, East Central took a couple of late shots on Preston Hare. And, of course, the Bison were beneficiaries of the penalty game in yardage. Definitely favored Oklahoma Baptist. That's so going to be trip eight, my man. Eight penalties, 88 yards. On the other side, you've got 102. You've got 190 yards and penalties against these two teams with 254 to go in the first half. I'm going to tell you, rare is the day you see Chris Jensen's club with over 100-yard penalties, let alone in less than two full quarters. For the 46, here to throw. Throws it out left. Roberson looking for a block. Didn't really get much from Hinkling, and he dives out to midfield. A gain of four. He stayed in bounds. The clock continues to roll. 236 and Kennedy to go first half. You know, Ty, the thing I like a whole lot about Cagney is no matter where he catches the ball, he's got that quick look trying to find another half an inch someplace. Try it again. And he does Rob it there again. And here he ducks his head and spins, stayed. Uh, I guess he didn't stay in bounds. He stepped out. But the thing is, he catches the ball, and if he's hemmed in, he's got that ability to find that little opening and dive and maybe get another half yard that you don't get. Sometimes that makes a difference over the course of a game. Sometimes that's the difference in a drive. Uh, bogging down on the next play or being made. Third down and four, as John told you, it was the same play. He tried to duck out of the defender, but couldn't get away from Brown that time before going out of bounds. Third and four, OBU at the Southeastern 48. Hare throws for Roberson, first down at the 40, out of an ankle tackle, and down to the 38-yard line he goes. Well, he had plenty. The thing was, I don't know if, if, if he 
changed the play right at the last moment. You had the two linebackers sneaking up. They came on the, on the blitz. All he had to do was get the step inside on the corner on that slant. He got it. Bingo, first down. Now Cagney starting to get involved. Three straight catches of this drive. That one, that's 10 to the southeastern 38. Here to throw. There's Roberson again on the slant. 30, bounces left, 25. It almost broke it as he lunges to the 19-yard line. Give him 19 more on a quick hitter, and here come the Bison. Right back at the Savage store. On that, on that slant that time, instead of making that deep slant, he just took one step to the right, kind of hopped around the defender, got behind him, and when he did, he was able to pick up 10 more. OBU with one timeout left, 131 to go with the first quarter, marching for a game-tying touchdown, and Preston Herod Company urging the crowd on down below as they will use their final timeout here in the first half. Cagney Roberson is just abusing cornerback Daquan Brown, who's single coverage on him. I think Grant Gower finally realized that, hey, we got single coverage on Roberson. Went, just went to the well five times right there. You know, the people that listen to our broadcasts week in and week out probably get tired of me saying this, but I'm going to say it because not everybody listens all the time every week. Cagney Roberson, as good as he is, is still in the learning stages of his high school or his uh, uh, college career. He only played one year of high school football at Coweta. We made mention of that last week, Juan Dog, that he now is starting to learn how to get with his big physical body inside position against those defensive backs. Definitely, and Brown was on the slant with the big game there. Brown was playing press coverage up on the line of scrimmage. The next play, Brown backed off about six yards knowing that Hey, I can't stick with this guy like that. Brown did, for the most part, a good job, guys, against Cagney. He limited him to just one short catch in the first quarter, but he's had five now in this drive, including five straight connections from his quarterback, Preston Hare. Well, it's not it's night and day. On the last series, he had Brown had two great plays to end a series, uh, and now he can't stay with him for five plays on this one. Pistol formation, the ground game at Stever behind right guard. He almost broke it. Cradling that football tight, the Washington All-State freshman gets down to the 14-yard line. I was talking to Tyler about uh, with some people this week. They said he's really a true freshman. I said he really is. Hand off again to Stever. Cuts right, leans inside the 10, and is going to have a first down. So this has been all done by Tyler Stever, and it's going to bring up first down and goal to go. Line of scrimmage at the nine-yard line with 70 seconds to play. OBU without a timeout. Late in the half, has to get up and ready to snap the football once they're ready it for play. Stever in a pistol with Hare, and they show some pressure off the quarter. Now Preston backs away and will take a look to the near side. 52 seconds to play in the first half. Hare from the nine, hands it off again to Stever, makes a little cut. Tyler keeps his legs moving and will pick up about two, maybe close to three at the six-yard line. It'll be second down and goal to go. Stever is still uh, one of the bigger backs of this ball club. And as I said last week at East Central, when he gets in a weight room, look out. Second down and goal to go. Three receivers to the far side of the slot to the near side, Cagney Roberson. Stever offset to the right, back to throw his hair. Dancing, moving right with the pocket. Now Preston is going to pull up. Throw in the back corner of the end zone. Nobody there. It's incomplete. Well defended that time by Southeastern. It's third down and goal to go for OBU. And I need to correct myself. The Bison have one timeout. Southeastern does not have a timeout remaining with 17 seconds to play here in the half. Well, you've got, you've worked the clock exactly where you want it now. You've, you've got the timeout. you got 17 seconds. You're inside the 10. And uh, you have a chance, you know, to take this one down to uh, big uh, goose eggs at the end and hopefully get into the end zone. Two receivers left and right in the slot is Hinkley. Starts the motion, slot left. Now lines back up. Slot right is Henderson. To the near side is Cagney Roberson. And there's some confusion at OBU now may have to burn their final timeout. They will do so with 17 seconds to play here in the first half. Preston Hare already has thrown a pick here for the first half that led to a Savage Storm touchdown. OBU, Brooksy, has got to start forcing turnovers for the opposition. This was a stat that I didn't get in last week, but I still think it bears repeating. Combined a year ago, East Central and OBU had fewer takeaways than six of the 12 teams in the Great American Conference. Yeah. They came in today, minus two. Bison now, minus three. Southeastern is plus four. You know, it never, sometimes it never seems to make a difference in the course of one game, but you spread it out over a season. And uh, 
it ends up being the little pivot point of a victory or a loss someplace along the way. All right, Bison back out of the field. Last week down to date of the OBU offense was three of four in the red zone. Tyler Stever, a big weapon for Grant Gower, the offensive coordinator in the red zone, is out there with the field. Two receivers left and right. Hare plants to throw, throws near side, caught at the pylon for the – no, they're saying he was out of bounds. It was Tyler Stever, and he was hit by Jared Bell, the outside linebacker, right as he made the catch, so he came down out of bounds, and it's going to bring up fourth down, and Luke Wendell will be on for a short field goal attempt. You know, you made that statement about uh, is he really a true freshman? You see that route run by that running back, and he protected, turned just right, so there was no chance for the interception even though it was an incompletion. 24-yard field goal attempt is on the way by Luke Wendell, and it is good. A chance to spend some time at midweek with Luke in preparing for our pregame show today. Well-spoken, very likable young man who has made great strides in his collegiate kicking career. Now three of four is Wendell in two games on field goal attempts. Well, that was a chip shot, but we know uh, how those chip shots sometimes can go the other way. All you have to do is ask the East Central kicker at the end of the game last week that allowed OBU to get the overtime win. So you don't take anything for granted. He chipped that one home, and Bison now, barring something really strange, are going to go to the dressing room. Uh, having scored on three possessions, the difference being they had to settle for the field goal. Very, very close, though, to getting a chance at uh, – fourth and goal at about the one inch line on that pass that preceded the field goal where Stiver caught it was jammed out of bounds didn't come down uh, inside the playing area well and keep in mind the Bison will have the football to start the second half and as John told you barring anything strange we're going to go to the locker room trailing just four it's 21 17 to southeastern Luke Wendell about to kick it away It'll be Norris and Roberts back to receive the kickoff. Cody Norris has returned both of Wendell's kicks thus far. Wendell will approach straight on, and he pooches it to the near side. And it's going to be caught at the 29. Fumble to the 30. Ball still free. OBU falls on the ball with two seconds to go in the first half. I'm trying to see. I think it was Chris Greer, 34 it was, that recovered the fumble for OBU. And time for one heave into the end zone for Oklahoma Baptist. Now, if this had happened at the other end of the field, you wouldn't have a heave. You'd have a end-of-the-half field goal try. But with this wind at about 10 miles an hour out of the north, you're right. It's going to be a heave into the end zone. Not a kick with their, not a field goal try. Ball at the 31-yard line. So. Final play, barring a defensive penalty with two seconds to go in the half. Back to throw his hair from the 40. Here comes the pressure, steps up. He'll throw it deep into the end zone. The ball is caught, and did he get in? He's struggling for the end zone. No sign yet, and they are saying that he is down. No, it was intercepted yeah. by Southeastern. Yeah. Boy, it looked like, Brooksy, that OBU had the ball. It was a jump ball with Noah McGraw, who was struggling for it, and maybe McGraw I did think McGraw have it. had it. They're acting like McGraw had the ball. And it may have been ripped out of his hands. There was so much going on to the yeah. goal line. There was about eight players there, so you really couldn't see. But initially, it looked like that Noah McGraw had made the play. They're saying Southeastern football, for what it's worth, is the first half comes to an end. Let's get out of the field. Scott Wallace with offensive coordinator Grant Gallagher. Where you at, Scott? I'm right here. Got Coach Gower. Uh, Cagney Roberson, you saw man-to-man -man coverage, and you just went to the well four or five times to him at the end of the first half there. Yeah, Cagney's tough to defend with anybody. Of course, all of our receivers are, but particularly he gets a matchup and kept going back on an isolated side. They started trying to cheat a little bit over on that side, but still not enough to really take all that away from him. So he, he is a he's incredible when he gets one-on-one. -on -one. And it looked like uh, you had a – Catch down there on the Hail Mary almost may, might have been taken away from you. Oh, I you know, I don't know. They ruled a completion and then a fumble. But if it's a completion, we were in end zone. Anyway, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I don't have a great look at it down here. But, you know, hey, 
defense playing great. We got the turnover right there to start that. Had the opportunity right there with two seconds to go. But, you know, hey, we get the ball to start the half. So we're pretty excited to get to go out on top. How about runs for Preston Hare? It looks like he started early or ahead. You look like you on film probably saw Southeastern something there. Yes, yeah, so against Southern Nazarene, Southern Nazarene's quarterback runs very well, and so you know we knew Preston would be able to do that. Obviously, as you saw, he, he's going to get as much as he can and get down and, and, and avoid some of the some of the shots. He did take a take a pretty good hit on the one personal foul, but you know that, that's what it really does is you know hey, he reads it out if it's there on the on the, on the sweep action, we hand it. If not, he gets it right up, right up the field with it. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Scott, congratulations, man. Hall of Fame, Choctaw. Hey, OBU alum going to Choctaw Hall of Fame, man. You're awesome, man. Appreciate you. Love you, buddy. Love you, man. Grant Gower, one of the nicest guys you will ever encounter at any level of coaching. It's been a true, true pleasure for me for the last three or four years to get to know Grant and his family, and I'll guarantee you those remarks very, very sincere to Scott Wanish. We have reached halftime. 21-17 is the score, and they are officially saying that it was intercepted by Zach Scott, so an interception ends the first half, and Southeastern preserves a four-point lead. Our halftime report is coming up next. The second quarter of action has been brought to you by the Oklahoma Baptist University Graduate of Professional Studies programs here on the Bison Radio Network. Trade it in for more and buy it for less. At Hudeberg Chevy in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Chevys for less. And you'll get payments that fit any budget. HudebergGM.com. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. I'm attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Did you know that an 18-wheeler outweighs your car 10 to 1? An 80,000-pound 18-wheeler can cause serious or fatal injuries to you and your family during collisions, and trucking companies need to be held to higher standards. Know your rights. Many companies and their drivers are cutting corners and violating federal regulations. As a result, trucking fatalities are on the rise. Don't trust your family's future to someone who does not have experience in the trucking industry. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. interested in uh, supporting our program 550 student athletes uh, 22 uh, varsity programs so uh, they're welcome to uh, to contact our office anytime and we'd love to help them get involved in uh, supporting what's going on here on bison hill number for the stampede club uh, 405-585-5300 and uh, anybody who's looking for more information can also find it uh, on the official website obubison.com slash stampede um, all that information is there including membership benefits uh, different levels and things like that so uh, with basketball season coming up um, and still with football season if someone's interested in uh, you know perhaps upgrading their uh, their stampede benefits for uh, parking or touchdown club or anything like that, they're welcome to give us a call, and we'll be happy to visit with them about that. All right, you talk about basketball season, but I think both teams are going to be much better. The man with the new coach and Jason Aker, looking forward to seeing him this year. But you also still can get football season tickets, and everybody's going, wait a minute, they've started. Well, this is one of six home games this year, so plenty of time to get out and enjoy some 
much improved Bison football. Absolutely, yeah. Looking forward to uh, a great year. Obviously great to have the, the home opener today, two 1-0 teams. Um, a lot of excitement around uh, all three of those programs. And um, anybody who's, who's interested in season tickets, definitely give us a call, and uh, we'll visit with you about options and, and that kind of thing. I think you can encourage people uh, wherever you're listening, Tulsa, Norman, Oklahoma City, here at Shawnee. If you've never been on campus for a football game, come out. Um, this is a great, great game day environment. Well, we appreciate that. We we put a lot of work into it, and uh, you know, trying to make a first class experience for you know our players and coaches down on the field, but also for our fans. And um, you know, there's something special about Bison Hill, and, and we want to make the the game day experience for everyone here as good as it can possibly be. Stampede Club information quickly before we let you go. Number. Yep, uh, 405-585-5300 is our main line. And, uh, again, obubison.com slash stampede, uh, all the information there and easy to find. Brian, great to see you. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate it. Brian Duty, Associate Athletic Director at OBU, in charge of the Stampede Club, visiting with us here at halftime. We are at the break, 2117 Southeastern. More in just a moment on the Bison Radio Network. At Oklahoma Baptist University, we'll help you find your passion in a community where your professors know you by name. We'll help you find your purpose by bringing faith and knowledge together through a Christian perspective. We'll help you find your future with a world-class education that prepares you for a successful career. We'll help you find a place to grow into who you were meant to be. Come grow with us. OBU, find your place. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Oklahoma now has more earthquakes than any other state in the union. Talk to your agent to make sure you have earthquake insurance. You need to protect your biggest investment. If your home has been damaged by an earthquake and your insurance company is refusing to pay your claim, you need to know your rights. You need a lawyer who has the resources and experience to take on those big insurance companies. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. Back to the Bison Hill campus. I'm Todd Miller on the Bison Radio Network. Next week, Arkansas Tech in for a 1 o'clock kickoff. Jalen Sims has a touchdown reception of 69 yards. Kenneth Burks has two short touchdown runs, one of two, the other of a one-yard flip. And that is the difference right now at 21-17. OBU scoring. Jacquez Henderson with his first touchdown reception of the year. A 25-yarder with 10.36 to go in the first quarter. Tied the game at 7. Dylan Smith had his first career touchdown reception. That with 3.38 to go in the first period. 23 yards from Hare. Both times Luke Wendell booted through the extra point. Smith's tied the game at 14. Kenneth Burks then had that one-yard flip that we told you about. That capped a very disheartening 13-play, 98-yard drive at 629 for Southeastern and Wendell closed the first half scoring with a 24-yard field goal. 14 plays, 86 yards and the time of the drive, uh, 353 for OBU. 21-17 our score at the break. Brooksy will be back with the first half numbers in a moment on the Bison Radio Network. At Oklahoma Baptist University, we'll help you find your passion in a community where your professors know you by name. We'll help you find your purpose by bringing faith and knowledge together through a Christian perspective. We'll help you find your future with a world-class education that prepares you for a successful career. 
We'll help you find a place to grow into who you were meant to be. Come grow with us. OBU, find your place. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Did you know that an 18-wheeler outweighs your car 10 to 1? An 80,000-pound 18-wheeler can cause serious or fatal injuries to you and your family during collisions, and trucking companies need to be held to higher standards. Know your rights. Many companies and their drivers are cutting corners and violating federal regulations. As a result, trucking fatalities are on the rise. Don't trust your family's future to someone who does not have experience in the trucking industry. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. Trade it in for more and buy it for less. At Hudeberg Chevy in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Chevys for less. And you'll get payments that fit any budget. HudebergGN.com. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. Home opener for 2018 OBU Trails. The preseason number four ranked team in the Great American Conference Southeastern at the break, 21 to 17. These are two of five teams that won, or two of six teams that won their, uh, how about, yeah, two of six teams that won their opening week games. The other, Wachita, Southwestern, uh, Harding, and uh, that's it. These two, that makes six. Gee, my math is really good, didn't it? This is also the only afternoon matinee of the Great American Conference. Tonight at 6, all these games will kick off at 6 o'clock. Henderson State is at Arkansas Tech. Southwestern at Washita Baptist. Southern Arkansas at, Henderson, at uh, Harding. It's East Central at Southern Nazarene and Northwestern. will play at Arkansas Monticello. That game has been moved from Cotton Bowl Stadium on the UAM campus to Monticello High School. Next week, Arkansas Tech is here at 1 o'clock. Our network pregame show will begin both in Norman, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, and Shawnee at 1230. Let's take a look at the first half numbers. First downs, 15 for Oklahoma Baptist, to 9 for Southeastern. Rushes, 21 carries, 101 yards for Southeastern, 12 for just 31 for the Bison. Passing, Preston Hare, 20 carries, 30 yards, 180 yards passing. 6 of 10 is Skinner passing for Southeastern, 100 yards. Total offense, 31 plays, 201 yards for Southeastern. OBU, 42 snaps, 211 yards offensively in the first half. Bison have been picked off twice with Preston Hare. Southeastern has lost one fumble. That's the first fumble gained this year by OBU. Time of possession, Southeastern about 45 seconds advantage. This after OBU had almost a 20-minute time of advantage in terms of possession time last week at East Central. Third down conversion, Southeastern 3 of 7. OBU was 4 of 9. Fourth down conversions, the Savage Storm are 1 and 1. Fourth down chances, both teams are perfect. Bison are 1 of 1. Southeastern is 2 of 2. Individually in the first half, the leading rusher for Oklahoma Baptist is Preston Hare. Three carries, 19 yards. Tyler Stevers carried four for 12. His longest was a five-yard carry. Darian Moss, who had got the start for the second straight day, four carries, a net of no yards, and Eli Paul, one carry for no yards. Kenneth Burks looking for his second straight 100-yard rushing game. Well on his way, 15 carries, 83 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. He leads the conference in rushing scores to start the year with four. Joel Carlos, one for seven. Ryan Taylor, two carries for six. Austin Skinner, the quarterback, two carries for four yards. Skinner was six of ten passing. He had one touchdown, a 69-yarder. That went to Jalen Sims, so 69 of his 100 yards through the air on one play. Preston Hare last week threw 49 times. Already he's put the ball in the air 30 times, completed 20 of those here in his home opener of his sophomore season, 180 yards along a 31 and a two-touchdown game. On the receiving end, Cagney Roberson was held to one catch of the first quarter. He had six over the final 15 minutes of the first half. The leading receiver of the ball game, seven for 80 yards, along a 31. Nick Hinkley, four catches for 13. Dylan Smith, Jock West Henderson, each with touchdown catches. Smith, 
two for 31, Henderson two for 28. Jalen Sims, the recipient of that 69-yard touchdown pass for Southeastern, one of three grabs for him in the first half, totaling 74 yards. Sky Lowe, who was shut out last week in the victory over Southern Nazarene, one catch for 11. Kenneth Burks out of the backfield, one for eight. Felton Hatcher had one for seven. Austin Skinner on a fourth down pooch kick, punted once in the first half for 29 yards. Joel Carlos, two for an average of 27. Hayden Ashley officially was credited with a 46-yarder. He's had his best punting day to date. Two punts for 42 yards. Michael Robert has one punt return, and uh, he fumbled that, so no yards. Kick returns, Norris three for 76, Robert one for two. Kickoff returns, one for nine yards for Jock West Henderson. Leading tackle in the first half, Lane Martin has seven total tackles, five of those on the unassisted side. And the leading tackler is Zach Scott for Southeastern at the break. We are at halftime, 21 to 17 in the home opener at football here on Bison Hill. We'll pause and have more numbers in just a moment. This is Oklahoma Baptist football on the OBU radio network. I'm sorry. Right, did you I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Oklahoma now has more earthquakes than any other state in the union. Talk to your agent to make sure you have earthquake insurance. You need to protect your biggest investment. If your home has been damaged by an earthquake and your insurance company is refusing to pay your claim, you need to know your rights. You need a lawyer who has the resources and experience to take on those big insurance companies. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. Trade it in for more and buy it for less. At Hudeberg Chevy in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Chevys for less. And you'll get payments that fit any budget. HudebergGM.com. You can count on Hudeberg. We'll give you more. Break away here for a few moments here at halftime. Let's recap for you the scoring in today's game. You had a look at the statistics before the break. This game uh, was only a minute and 37 seconds old, and Southeastern State was on the board. It was a 72-yard drive in three plays, but it was the third play that did it. Busted coverage by uh, the Bison. Jalen Sims streaks unmolested downfield on a deep pass from uh, uh, from Austin Skinner. He's all alone at the 35-yard line, about 10 yards separated from any uh, body in green, and he takes it, streaks the rest of the way. It's a 69-yard pass, extra point good, 7 nothing. Game a minute 37 old. But uh, it didn't last lead uh, long that lead because the Bison were on the board, and less than two minutes later, with 10.36 to go in the opening uh, period, it was Jacques Henderson with a 25-yard pass from Preston Hare. Luke Wendell, the kick was good. That was a 59-yard play in, uh, uh, excuse me, 59-yard drive in eight plays, and uh, it was tied at uh, seven. Then with 7.03 to go in the first, Southeastern State on a uh, uh, just a 24-yard drive in two plays gets a two-yard uh, touchdown run from Kenneth Burks. It's 44 seconds of possession on the two plays. And right back comes uh, Oklahoma Baptist. Four minutes later, three and a half minutes later, 
It's the end of a 75-yard drive that took 10 plays. Dylan Smith with a 23-yard pass from Preston Hare. The extra point by Wendell is good. Game tied at 14. And for Dylan Smith, a junior, he waited a long time for that first catch in the green uniform of the Bison. And when it came, it was a touchdown pass. 8.31 to go just before the midway mark of the second quarter. Southeastern State got the lead back. This was the most disappointing part of the first half for the Bison, certainly on the defensive side. A punt uh, had uh, been had rolled dead at the two-yard line from Luke Wendell, and it looked like that the defense had an opportunity to get the ball back for the offense with less than half the field to work. Instead, it went just the opposite way. A 13-play drive and a lot of it on the ground for Southeastern State as they just absolutely butchered in the first part of that drive. The defense of the Bison with slicing runs through uh, not, not only off tackle but also getting outside on the perimeter. Uh, they move the ball to midfield, then they go to the air, and when it's all over at the end, Kenneth Burks goes in from a yard out with uh, – Six minutes and a half on that drive consumed. Time 8.31 on the clock. Joel Carlos's kick made it 21-14. to 14. And then, uh, as you heard, the late field goal by the Bison, 24-yard field goal from Luke Wendell with six seconds to go. The ensuing kickoff is fumbled. Bison recover it. Two seconds to play. They get one chance for a Hail Mary into the end zone, and it almost made that Noel McGraw at the goal line was up leaping for it, came down, Thought he had it. It was stripped loose, and the official ruling is that it was an interception. And uh, because of that uh, ruling for uh, quarterback Preston Hare, uh, he's now got two eyes on the board, two interceptions for the game. So uh, the ball will be in the hands of the Bison to start the third quarter uh, with the kickoff uh, by Southeastern State. So the offense will get a chance to try to get the lead for the first time. They've been able to fight back twice and get even and then get back within four, and that's where we set at 21-17. to 17. Back with the second half of play in a moment. You're listening to Bison Football on the Oklahoma Baptist University Football Network. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre with McIntyre Law. If you've had a hip replacement surgery recently, you may have had an artificial implant with metal-on-metal -metal contacts. If so, you may be experiencing pain or other side effects, and you need to know your rights. Metal on metal hips have had significant problems and some have even been recalled. Know your rights. If you or someone you love needs our help, put your future in the hands of an experienced trial lawyer. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. Trade it in for more, buy it for less. It's that easy. At Hudeberg Buick GMC in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Buicks and GMCs for less. HudeburgGM.com. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. For the start of the second half, as we told you, Southeastern won, got the football to start. OBU will have it to start the second half at a 21-17 ball game. Davis will kick off for Southeastern. Jacquez Henderson is one of the two deep return men for Oklahoma Baptist. Good first half, 21-17 our score at the break. Here is Davis, seven-yard approach. And we're underway in the second half, and it will sail with the wind of his back through the back of the end zone. You know, you say wind to the back, and I, every time you say that, and I look, and I look over there, and the fly down, it's up there a little bit. It was almost limp. It's been a, it, it's been a weird wind. It, it, it seems like it waits until Davis kicks 
for Southeastern State and gets up just enough. Well, he has drilled the last two into the end zone deep. He and Juan Carlos, excuse me, Joel Carlos, both have taken turns on kickoffs this afternoon. Darian Moss, who started the ball game, will open the second half as the single set back, offset to the left of Hare. Bunch formation wide left. Four-man defensive front handoff to Darian Moss, and he'll pick up about a half yard just shy of the 21-yard line. Basically, it was the entire defensive front for the Savage Storm that greeted him. Leading the way was Jonathan Torres, who in the first half wore number 96. He's gone into witness protection, now wears 63. <laughs> like that. Did you think about that line the whole time while I was recapping? No, because I didn't know it until I got back in the booth. Okay. Second and nine, hair play action pass to throw over the middle. He has a receiver at the 35, first down to the 40, and out across the 43-yard line. Look who it was. It was the tight end, Reese Gilbert, who's being featured a little bit more this afternoon. He'll come off as Jacques Henderson comes in after a gain of 17. That was a good look off as he went to Cagney, then threw it over the middle to Gilbert. Now they check out of the play. Opening drive of the second half, OBU moving from right to left to the home gray, white, green, and gold uniforms. Southeast of the road, white, navy, and blue, uh, gold trim. Hinkley motions from left to right of the formation, pistol formation. Now a read pass option. They pitch on the perimeter to Moss, and Darian gets his best run of the early season as he turns up field and gets from the 43 almost to the 48-yard line. And that was Cagney Roberson that got the big block coming from the receiver position to free him. They do spot the ball at the 48, so Darian with his longest carry of the afternoon, five yards. OBU second down in five, ball on the near side hash. Field really hold it up after multiple inches of rain here in central Oklahoma this week. Back to throw his hair, looks left, he's got Roberson to the 40. He comes back, makes the catch, it's out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Well thrown football, and there is the connection that Cagney and Preston have, and that's a good cover corner, Luke Craddock, who was right there in position. Exactly. Craddock played it well. It was just a great catch by Roberson, able to get the body turned, and a perfect throw from Preston Hare. Couldn't be picked. Only thing could happen would be a catch. It was. First and 10, OBU at the Southeastern 38. Handoff goes to Stever trying to get loose. He's at the 35-yard line and almost broke it. Boy, he is strong. Very, very strong for a true freshman, and that's about as hard of uh, tough of a three-yard run as you're going to see. I'm telling you, just look here at the stats. 6'1", 200, Moss, 5'8", 180. There's a lot of difference in those five inches and those 21 pounds. 12-47 in County to go, third period, 21-17 Southeastern. Here with the home opener on Bison Hill. Steve removes for the left to the right, offset of Preston Hare from the 34-yard line. Hare drops all the way back to the 45, hit as he throws, and it's caught outright, and very near a first down reception that time. It was Noah McGraw that came back, as again, there was good coverage for the defensive back from Southeastern. They're going to spot it at the 28, needed to get, or just shy of the 28, and he needed to get to the 28 to keep the drive alive. It was Quincy Dotson and Jared Bell that had the pressure on him, and he threw that off the back of his foot. He got just enough zip on it to get it in there, and uh, the catch by McGraw leaves him a foot short. Zach Frazier has come in on the offensive side, and they hand it off to Stever, who leans forward and gets the first down easily. Told you he needed to get to the 28. He's down to the 27. And OBU threatening to take the lead here over the preseason number four team of the Great American Conference in Southeastern Oklahoma State. Bison have beaten Southeastern 15 times all time in school history. Line of scrimmage at the 27. Handed off to Stever again. He's hemmed in and dropped for a loss of three back to the 30-yard line. Well, the push came the wrong way that time, Todd. You could tell that just the way you called it. There were an awfully lot of white jerseys in that backfield waiting for him. Luke Craddock from the defensive back position on the left corner came in and got penetration right off the bat. Drew McBeth, one of those defensive ends, was there as well. Loss of three to the 30. Henderson motions from left to right of the formation, lines up slot right. They'll throw it to Henderson, who makes the catch in traffic at the 24. And he is wrestled down, so he gets the lost yardage plus three more back of the previous play. It's going to bring up third down and long for OBU. Bison of their first game and a half this year have been improved in so many areas, guys, but third down conversions on both sides of the football has been one of the real reasons they have a chance at a 2-0 start. Yeah, a little dump pass on the in the right flat there makes this a manageable third and six. Third and six, ball just shy of the 23. Back to throw his hair. The pressure throws it out right for Henderson. It's caught for a first down. He had a defensive back draped on him, 
and he made the catch at the 12-yard line. Great job by Jacquez Henderson, but the throw was perfect from Hare. That's the thing. You can go back to the last three throws on this drive and put the word perfect in there because every one of them has had to be exactly where it was. Hare is on a roll right now. 11th play of the drive. OBU has moved for their own 25 down to the southeastern 12. On the slant, they throw for McGraw over the middle, and he's tackled. And a flag comes in. Craddock was the one that was trying to work in coverage on the slant, and he tackled him right as Noah, or right before Noah had his hands on the football. I think it was the headlinesman that tossed the flag, and I mean it came immediately. He was all over McGraw. He even pulled his jersey down past the shoulder pads. Ugly first half in terms of penalties. OBU was penalized for 102 yards. That's more than they had in any game last year and already the third highest total in penalties since I've been calling games three years ago. It just does not happen. Southeastern of the first half, eight penalties for 86. That is their ninth flag of the day. And OBU will have it first down and goal to go inside the 10. They're going to spot it down at about the eight-yard lot. One back set is Darian Moss, and Moss will get the call. Cracks up over the right guard, and he gets almost three. They're going to stop him just shy of the five. Darian of the first half was held to just no yards net on four carries. Devin Mitchell disrupting that play defensive tackle for the Savage Storm. Second down and goal to go at the six. Hare with three receivers left. Now Jacques Henderson starts the motion right. Comes back left. Hare looking that way. Has time to throw for Robertson who makes a leaping catch in the end zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma Baptist. Oh, my, how about Cagney? Nobody's going to outjump him for that ball. 6-3, and you know when he brought it down, he was about six foot eight or 6-9. Was and a perfect pass where only Robertson could catch it. Three different receivers have touchdown passes today, and the good guys are on top. 23-21, Penny the point after. The only way he could catch it, Scott said it, four consecutive throws like that. Extra point is good by the reigning Great American Conference Special Teams Player of the Week. Luke Wendell will step aside, 9.52 to play in the third. Oklahoma Baptist 24, Southeastern 21 of the Bison Radio Network. At Oklahoma Baptist University, we'll help you find your passion in a community where your professors know you by name. We'll help you find your purpose by bringing faith and knowledge together through a Christian perspective. We'll help you find your future with a world-class education that prepares you for a successful career. We'll help you find a place to grow into who you were meant to be. Come grow with us. OBU, find your place. I'm attorney Noble McIntyre with McIntyre Law. If you've had a hip replacement surgery recently, you may have had an artificial implant with metal on metal contacts. If so, you may be experiencing pain or other side effects and you need to know your rights. Metal on metal hips have had significant problems and some have even been recalled. Know your rights. If you or someone you love needs our help, put your future in the hands of an experienced trial lawyer. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. No one except the player that was wearing the same colors you did. You're exactly right, Brooks. And we talked about it on the catch by Jacquez Henderson with coverage. And then, of course, that touchdown throw to Cagney, who had used all of his athletic ability to climb the charts and get up there for the score. Boy, did he get up. I have seen Cagney Ro Roberson jump high, but I think that's the highest I've seen him. I think I don't know how well you know Cagney. I've known him for a long time because he played basketball too. The guy is about as unassuming of a man, and I talk about this a lot, as you'll ever find, but when he's on the field, he ain't the same dude. I'm just going to tell you right now. He was just head and shoulders above the defensive backfield there. All just I know is I'm glad that dude is on our team. Here's Wendell to kick it off, angles it to the near side. It hits at the 35 and goes, or 25 and goes out of bounds. So it'll be at the 30-yard line for Southeastern, and I'm not certain what Luke was doing right there. I know what win there is. He was kicking into it, but don't even take a chance with the sideline. There is a win, but the wind is really not that bad. It's no. bearable. It's less than 10 miles per hour. I, I told you the wind only comes up when Luke kicks into it. 
and when uh, Southeastern kicks with it. Now the onus on the defense. Can they get a stop? They've given up a 98-yard 13-play series. It really was a kick in the gut in the second quarter. So again, the line of scrimmage will be at the 35-yard line after the false start. His whistle on the kick that went out of bounds. Huge play on the last drive was the pass interference penalty. The Bison were looking at a chip shot field goal. That would only got them within one point. When they got the first down, got the touchdown to Roberson for the lead. Kenneth Burks, the leading rusher of the ball game, 15 carries for 83 yards, a pair of touchdowns for the second straight week, has gone much of the way at tailback. He is in there, and he gets the call on first down, and he pushes his way to the 40 and up to the 41-yard line. Right up the back of a blocker that time. I think it was Matt Morse, the left guard, a senior. 6'1", 300 pounds from McKinney, Texas, that uh, got in his way. He'll pick up almost seven, going to bring up second and short. The Savage Storm are really finding holes around the guard area. Line of scrimmage at the 46. Southeastern moving from left to right. One back set, and again it's Burks. Kenneth bounces it out left, and he gets a little room and squirts out for a first down to the 47-yard line of, Oakland, or of Southeastern. You know, Burks, when, when he makes those cuts sometimes, Todd, he looks like he's going no place, but there's been three occasions where he's made that cut and suddenly found more room and gone a whole lot of places. You're exactly right. And you know what happens? He's not real big, 5'8", so he gets lost in traffic a little bit. And he's got great footwork, able to find the slightest of holes. First and 10, play action pass. Skinner to throw as all day, looking deep down the field for Sims. It's caught. And down he goes, and now it's stripped out of his hands, incomplete. Felipe Alvier was the one that reached in there as Jalen Sims, who had beat him in coverage, was headed to the ground with what looked to be a catch. Well, I thought it was. I, I thought for a second they might rule to catch it down, uh, you know, once he was on the ground. But uh, he, he did strip it loose, but Alvier has to be happy he did because he got twisted around in there and uh, was unable to make complete that play defensively. It didn't look like he was going to until he got the strip. Second and 10 for the Southeastern 46-yard line. Twins to the near side, one receiver slot left, handoff again to Burks, and he picks up positive yardage for running straight up the gut to midfield. It's going to bring up third down at six. Once again, right behind the center and the two guards. Southeastern has been a Division II program since 1996. And up front on both sides of the football, guys, they look like it. They are really good. We knew coming in they were really good on film defensively. But when you see them in person up front, really on both sides of the ball, they're special. Third down and six at midfield. They need to get to the 44 of OBU. Here comes the crowd noise. Lining up in the slot left is Jalen Sims. Have to know where he's at. One back set, back to throw is Skinner. They blow the play dead. And Southeastern is going to burn the first of their three complimentary timeouts here in the second half. 8.03 to play third period. This is a huge, and I mean huge, third down opportunity, both for OBU's defense and the Savage Storm offense in a game that OBU has clearly the momentum right now after going right down the gut and taking the lead of the first drive of the second half. PNK Equipment is a premier John Deere dealer, proudly serving customers across Oklahoma and Arkansas through their 18 locations, which include the Oklahoma City, Springdale, Tulsa, and Fort Smith metro areas. Visit them online at pkequipment.com. SSM Health, St. Anthony Hospital Shawnee compassionately serves health care needs of Shawnee, Oklahoma, and the surrounding communities. We're known for providing exceptional care and offering the latest advances in medical services. I almost read that as to say the latest adventures. <laughs> Here we go, third down and six, Southeastern at midfield. Savage storm of the ball game, just three of seven on third down conversions after last week, converting six of 13. Skinner drops to the 42, throws it out, Burks has it, and he's buried for a loss. Oh, a great play turned in by guess who? Landon Rowlett came up from the strong safety spot, and the junior from Plano, Texas, to this point in the ball game, makes the defensive play of the contest. That was actually a perfect call by Southeastern on the blitz. Linebacker Lane Martin blitz yeah. for OBU, and they threw the screen, but Roulette was there one-on-one -on -one and made a wrap-up tackle. Joel Carlos, who last year had an opponent season high, five kicks inside the opponent's or uh, the OBU 20-yard line will punt again. 
High snap, no pressure, and he gets a tight spiraling punt to the near side. And Henderson will wave for the fair catch just shy of the 12-yard line. So good punt for Carlos, and OBU will start deep of their own end of the field with 7-12 to play in the third quarter, and the Bison leading the Savage Storm 24-21, 43 yards, no return for Carlos on that punt. De defensive coordinator Brandon Morris for Oklahoma Baptist University came off the field. He's talking to his defense now. He was clapping. Big stop. The blitz worked. Southeastern calls the screen against the blitz, but Landon Roulette one-on-one -on -one was right there. Sorry we didn't have a chance to get Brandon on at halftime as we usually will do this year. Did you have a chance at least to talk to him off of there? What was his mood following the 21-point first half? You know, Brandon is really pretty even keel, and uh, we talked about pursuit after the first initial hit where Burks is just breaking off and getting that, and he knows that his guys have got to gang tackle to take down these strong running backs. OBU will have it near their own 12-yard line. Leading 24 to 21 under the midway point of the third quarter. Two big weeks back to back against teams preseason picked at a tie for fourth of the league coaches poll. Southeastern today, Arkansas Tech next week. Preston Hare, who was surgical on that last drive, starts his second third quarter possession at his own 12 yard line. Two backs in the backfield, two wide receivers right. Hand off to Stever, try to make a cut, and it looked like maybe he lost a little footing, but the defense was there as well to cover him up and shut him down for no gain. Stever is one of those freshmen that we just love the way he breaks tackles, but this big defensive line by the Savage Storm is really making it difficult for any running back to run. Second down and 10, no gain officially for Tyler Stever, who in the first half carried four times for seven yards. Stever remains out there as the setback with his hands on his knees to the right of Hare. Preston back to throw for the five. Pocket holes throwing the pass incomplete. Underthrown and it was knocked away by Luke Craddock. The intended target was Noah McGraw and he was acting like he was being pushed or held from behind by Craddock. Yeah, but he's going to acting school next week, did you know? I did not. Yeah. McGraw actually had a couple steps on him. The ball was just a little bit underthrown for the incompletion. Southeastern shuffling personnel in and out. They'll go with a five defensive back look on third down and 10 for the Bison of their own 12-yard line. If for no other reason you want to pick up a first down or two to try and flip field position back in your favor defensively. Stever in the backfield with Hare. Slot left is Cagney Roberson. Back to throw Preston looking this way. Cagney is pushed as he tried to make a break towards the sideline. And they're going to put the flag in the pocket or leave it there. And I think that's a good no call because I don't think that ball was catchable. Southeastern safety, Larry Bridges came on the safety blitz along with the, the front four just pressuring Hare. Hare just had to let that go out of bounds. Savage Storm defense, which has been among the conference best, ranking to the top half of the league much of the last four or five years that are Bo Atterbury does their job and forces a three and out. Ashley, who had a good first half punting, will stand a yard and a half deep in his own end zone at the south end. OBU with three up to protect the punter. Here comes the snap. He gets a good leg into it, and it is going to be Robert on the field at the 44. Breaks two tacklers. Won't get free of a third as down there first was Aaron Regas to corral him, and then he had some help from about three or four other teammates. They'll spot the return of one up to the 43 of OBU. It'll be a short field for Southeastern, trailing just three, but late here in the third period with 5.25 to go. Nice punt coverage by the Bison there, assisted by Noah Villiser. So first and 10, they're going to spot it. They originally look like at the 43. It's back at the 44 of OBU. Austin Skinner, the junior quarterback from Teague, Texas, remains out there behind center. He's out of the gun in a pistol formation. Hand off to Burks. Burks tiptoes his way to the line of scrimmage, tries to spin right, is grabbed and tackled for a loss. That's one of those instances, guys, you're better off going down. Initial forward progress, and they're not giving it to him. Look at the line of scrimmage. Instead, they're going to spot it back outside the 45. Yeah, Colton and Alvier in there and a couple of other green-shirted uh, or green-jersey bison but uh, no opportunity that time. And once Burks got corralled over there, he wasn't going anyplace. Second and 12 of the 46-yard line under five minutes to play here in the third period. They'll throw a slant over the middle, and it's caught. That's sky low in traffic, and he gets the lost yardage back and gains to the 39. That's going to bring it third down at a very manageable five 
for Austin Skinner and Company. Rollin Kittisul is their backup quarterback. I bring him up because you might remember last year, C.B. Cantwell was their starter. He was injured very early in the game against OBU, knocked out, and Kittisaw came in and led Southeastern to come from behind victory. Third down, a long five. They fake the handoff. Skinner rolling right from near midfield, running out of time. Hit as he throws near side. The catch is made, but out of bounds by Jalen Sims. Good Line. coverage downfield, guys, by the secondary because Skinner had some time initially after he got the snap back from center to survey the field. Initially he had time, but Lane Martin was in heavy pursuit coming from his right linebacker position all the way across the field to force that pass out of bounds. Lane Martin, folks, has had himself a game. Just a, another one of those young pups, a redshirt sophomore from Stratford, 5'11", 200 pounds. He was the leading tackler officially in the first half on the defensive stat sheet for OBU. Right now, Joel Carlo is in punt formation. Carlos faked a punt earlier. This time he'll pooch it to the near side, trying to pin OBU back deep. Hits at the five, and then it's going to be downed Is at the goal line. But he was in the end zone. The guy that touched it was laying on his side yes, in the end zone, and now they finally touchback. get together and say it is a touchback. Boy, Carlos showed what type of punter he is there because that was a really good effort. Yeah, the back judge threw the bean bag inside the one, but the, the field judge came in over who called the touchback. Yeah, they had, a, they had a little talk there. Thing was, he had it, but he was rolling in the end zone, and the ball spun just enough and just grazed the goal line, and I think that was the difference right there. Very, very close to uh, having to start at your one-foot line. Yeah, about 24 and a half inches or yards difference in where you start at the 25 yard line is where OBU will scrimmage. Darian Moss is the tailback out there and Hare will throw a slant to Cagney at the 30 and he's grabbed from behind immediately and knocked down after a five yard gain with under four minutes to play 350 to be exact in the third quarter 24 21 Bison. Troy Parker, defensive back for the Savage Storm is playing press coverage on Roberson. Handoff goes to Reuben Thompson who's back out there, and Thompson weaves his way for three up to the 33, <laughs> running behind the right guard, Creed Wright. That little slant can set up a deep pass. They're playing press on Roberson. Three wide right, Roberson slot left. In the backfield is Reuben Thompson alongside Preston Hare. Hare with a check with me play. Now moves Roberson into a pistol formation. Play clock, plenty of time to go, 17 seconds to snap it. They snap it. With 12 seconds, it's a read pass option. He'll pitch left to Thompson, try to get to the 35. He was hit, but fell forward, and I think he has the first down. The linesman of the near side is spotting the ball at the 35 and just beyond. <laughs> Reuben Thompson did all that after initial contact. Wow. You talk about falling forward, keeping your legs moving. That extra effort got a huge first down on Thompson third down. gets the call again, tries to weave his way behind the center. That time, Zach Blevins, and he'll pick up a yard and a half, stop just shy of the 37-yard line. And off the bottom of the pile was Roderick Kirby, the backup nose tackle, a junior from Muskogee, 280 pounds. They're starting three up front, 265, 295, 244. The backup's 220, 280, and 240. Yard gain. Hinkley motions from left to right of the formation for the 36. Here a quick drop, throws for Cagney, who makes the adjustment and has the reception of the 46-yard line and pushed out of bounds at the 47. In coverage for Southeastern was Jeremiah Baltrip. Boy, those guys have had, uh, now, that time it was against uh, somebody different than Brown, but he did another great spin move. OBU goes quickly, and they may have gone too quickly because yeah, there was movement. The flag came in about the time Preston threw it out left flat for Dylan Smith. Another back shoulder throw to Cagney Roberson. Roberson got away with a little push off, but it grabbed the ball, and he's so strong it just gets a big play. OBU, who won the time of possession battle last week by almost 12 full minutes in that overtime victory at East Central, owning possession of the football here in this second half against Southeastern. Bunch formation, short left, wide right, Noah McGraw. In the backfield, Darian Moss on first and 15 from the OBU 48-yard line. Bison lead 24-21, a minute 40 to go here in the third period. Hare awaits the snap back from center Zach Blevins. Flag comes down, they throw it out right, pass incomplete. 
as he was looking for Josh Cornell. It was Cornell, incidentally, and not Noah McGraw that was lined up wide right. And a flag comes in. It's in the backfield. OBU is starting to point the way of Southeastern, so the Bison may have gotten a break on that play. May have a pass interference call as well. There was two, there was two flags on the play. There's one flag deep in the backfield, one here on the far left sideline. I'm wondering if it's offsides and roughing the passer. Here is Joey Newsom, our referee. Chris Jensen is looking at him as Newsom comes over and visits with the side judge, Rodney Davis. We'll hear the official announcement here in just a moment. Right now, it's second and 15 OBU at their own 48-yard line. Well, Brooksy, your guy, I won't have to worry about saying it. I'll say it one more time. Lua Fatata Sanga has been ejected for targeting. He came, you know what? He came close earlier. You mentioned it earlier uh, in the game on a tackle on Preston O'Hare right in the middle of the uh, end of a run. This time he's headed off on the far side. He's through for the Boy, afternoon. that is a big loss. He was yeah. the co-leading tackler yeah. for Southeastern's defense in the first half. So offsides declined. Personal foul targeting with an ejection, 15 yards and a first down for OBU to the Southeastern 42-yard line with 144 to play here in the third quarter. Darian Moss is the setback. Ruben Thompson has been in there as well on this drive. Three receivers wide right, ball in the near side hatch. Give goes to Moss, there was a seam, and boy, he almost broke it. Tackle to the 37-yard line if Kaylee Woods, who just came in, incidentally, for the ejected defender, does not make that play. It's not a touchdown, guys, but OBU is sitting really pretty. And that's the quickest that Darren Moss this season. We've seen him hit the hole, really got through there quick. Five-yard gain to the 37. Again, it's Moss, and this time he's drugged down after a yard gain. No gain, actually. They look like they were at spot of the 36. It's at the 37. Woods again making the stop defensively for the Savage Storm. And on those two plays, guys, one reason he made it the first time, a nice run. John Kick Calhoun and Jake Foshi had a nice hold for him. Second time, no hold. One minute to go, third period, clock rolling, 24-21 OBU, more than likely in four-down territory through their own 37, third down and five. Moss, the single setback here, direct snap. Back pedals to the 45, throws it. He has Roberson over the middle at the 30, and Cagney is flipped up at the 27-yard line. Well, that play is there all day long for Preston and for Cagney. It was a timing pattern on a drag play across the field that Roberson was doing. Hare had to be patient to dump that ball when Roberson got separation from Bridges. Gain of 10 on third and five to the 27 of Southeastern. Harrell throws a slant over the middle again, and it's caught this time by Cornell, who had to make an adjustment of the ball that was thrown behind him. And Josh takes a step that is spun down to the 16 of Southeastern. On those short passes, on those slant passes, Preston Harris has got to throw it through the defensive line as well. And instead of just leading it, he's got to watch out for the lineman batting the ball down. Great pass by Hare. That is going to be the final play of quarter number three. 15 minutes to go, and OBU is filling an upset. Bison lead 24-21 over Southeastern on the Bison Radio Network. Todd. I have no idea where we're at on this log. John, no. I'm attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Did you know that an 18-wheeler outweighs your car 10 to 1? An 80,000-pound 18-wheeler can cause serious or fatal injuries to you and your family during collisions, and trucking companies need to be held to higher standards. Know your rights. Many companies and their drivers are cutting corners and violating federal regulations. As a result, trucking fatalities are on the rise. Don't trust your family's future to someone who does not have experience in the trucking industry. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. 
Trade it in for more and buy it for less. At Hudeberg Chevy in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Chevys for less. And you'll get payments that fit any budget. HudebergGM.com. You can count on Hudeberg. We'll give you more. Three periods has outgained Southeastern 329 to 218. First and 10, Bison of the 16 as we open play of the fourth. OBU attacking the goal off to the right. Man in motion is Reese Gilbert, the tight end. They hand it off to Moss, tries to cut inside, got out of an ankle tackle, but still, Southeastern with good pursuit to the football covers him up for a yard loss back to the 17. Kaylee Woods able to get the penetration that time. Had he not gotten the penetration, Moss maybe had a chance to get some yardage, but Woods got in there and was able to ankle tackle him. It ends up being a one-yard loss. Hare, 30 of 42, passing, two interceptions, three touchdowns, 278. Skinner, 10 of 16, 118 yards, and a touchdown for Southeastern. Hare to throw, pocket holds. Now he'll tuck it, throws as he's hit, near side, caught! It's Hinkley that made the catch at the 12-yard line, and somehow he's kept his concentration, stayed in bounds, and got just shy of the 10. So they're going to pick up almost seven and bring up third down and four. Hare had time, then the protection started to break down, and he was being hit as he threw a good football to the near side to Hinkley. That was Hare's third read on the play. He was looking for Cagney Roberson left, then came back right to Hinkley. Fifth catch of the day for Nick, who is really emerging as a big weapon of the passing game. Third down, a long four. Ball just outside the southeastern 10. Direct snap, back to throw Hare. Throws in the end zone. Caught! Touchdown! Dylan it's Smith. Dylan Smith. Dylan Smith, who had not had a touchdown in his career. Now a junior here on Bison Hill has a two-touchdown game at Oklahoma Baptist. It extends the advantage to nine, pitting the extra point. Dylan Smith stepping in for Josh Pettyjohn. He Pettyjohn's the guy that gets in the little open holes on the on the zone. Smith did it again for the touchdown, exact same play over the middle. And Dylan will be the holder for the point after try from Luke Wendell, who is perfect today. He also has a field goal, a short one of the ball game. This at the south end, the snap is back. The ball is down, the kick is in the air. He split the uprights. Timeout on the field. 13-47 to play in the ball game. In Shawnee, Oklahoma Baptist 31, Southeastern 21. The fourth quarter brought to you by McIntyre Law on the Bison Radio Network. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Oklahoma now has more earthquakes than any other state in the union. Talk to your agent to make sure you have earthquake insurance. You need to protect your biggest investment. If your home has been damaged by an earthquake and your insurance company is refusing to pay your claim, you need to know your rights. You need a lawyer who has the resources and experience to take on those big insurance companies. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. Now has four touchdown passes in the ball game, five in his redshirt sophomore season, and it's 31-21 Bison Hill with 13 on Bison Hill with 13:47 to play in the ball game. Special teams trying to urge the home crowd on. Pretty good crowd, despite early game weather here in Shawnee. A little pooch kick to the far side, and it's going to be caught at the 17, out to the 18, to the 20-25, and weaving his way upfield on the return near the 30-yard line. The kick was returned that time by Cody Norris. Will Coleman, the freshman for Oklahoma Baptist, made the uh, tackle. Ray Fink, as good as there is, you ask and you shall receive, tells me that Preston Hare has tied a career high with four touchdown passes. 
13. Hey, you know what? He's closing in on that career high for attempts, too. 13.40 to play in the ball game. Skinner out of the gun. Hands it off to Burks, running wide left. Dodges two tacklers, gets to the corner, fumbles the football. It's on the turf. I think Oklahoma Baptist has come up with it. The Bison are celebrating on the sideline, and Southeastern has copped up the ball. Felipe Alviar stripped that ball from behind, punched it out for a huge turnover. So OBU, who had not forced a turnover last week at East Central, has forced two fumbles in game two today. Just hit the other side for just a moment, guys. It doesn't look like it's bad. Lee Martin was down on the field. Uh, trainers went out to take a look at him. Uh, under his own accord, he's walked back over here to the sideline being uh, talked to. But Big, big uh, turnover right here and a chance, quite frankly, maybe to put this baby in the W column. 13-31 to play. They empty the backfield, send Moss in motion. It's a quarterback draw as Preston Hare with nimble feet dodges one defender and comes to a sliding stop at the 32. Give him six, second, and four, and that'll take us under 13 minutes to play. OBU threatening to take a three-score advantage. The design quarterback draw. Grant Gower told us at halftime there were running lanes for Hare. Hand off to Moss, and he's close to a first down. Skipped out of initial contact at the 31, lunged across the 30 down to the 29-yard line, and that should, from our vantage point, be enough for a first down. They are saying move the chains. They're going to spot it at the 28-yard line, so in two plays, OBU going for the juggler after forcing the turnover for Southeastern. Moss did a good job of covering up that football as linebacker Will Johnson tried to strip that. Three receivers left to get it. It's Moss up the middle, and Moss is inside the 25 down to the 24. Four yards, second and six. Guys, what you're seeing, it, well, I'll address you, Scott, is what we saw last week in the ball game. the condition of OBU starting to take over against that worn-out defensive front. Yeah, all summer long they had summer pride, just working hard. Everybody was around, everybody working together. The best fitness level that uh, Coach Jensen's seen. Before the snap back from center, we get a timeout on the field. It was called by Southeastern. So we'll keep it right here with 12.25 to play in the ball game. OBU leading 31 to 21. I'm going to tell you, if this team, which has won two games each of the last two years, beats Southeastern to go to 2-0, and oh, they are going to start to become noticed and turn some heads in the Great American Conference. If this doesn't do it, well, give us time because this, folks, is a much, much better football team. And it is without Isaiah Mallory. Yeah. Uh, which is a surprise around the conference. In the past, you could not have survived the loss of Isaiah Mallory. We kind of saw that last year, just not enough depth. There is. We've seen Thompson. We've seen Moss. We've seen Paul. And, of course, Tyler Stever last week rushing for two touchdowns. And uh, that in itself was a, fa a fairly historic outing for the true freshman from Washington. Time back in out of the southeastern timeout. Line of scrimmage at the 28. It's second down and six. Dylan Smith with two touchdown catches. Motion's right. The give again is to Moss. Moss is stretched out, but not before forward progress. Gets him almost two down to the 26-yard line. It's going to bring up third down for the Bison with under 12 and a half to play. Exactly to follow up what you said. I just had a look at Creed Wright. Creed Wright not only makes the uh, <clears throat> block on the defensive lineman, He's downfield, pushed him so far. He's taking care of the linebacker. Here comes his running back right behind him. Great push off the line by the right guard, Creed Wright. Bison about to snap it for the 71st time of the ball game. They have it third down and fourth to 22. Dylan Smith motions to the far side. Harris or Hare looking left, looking right, rolls right, throws off of his back foot incomplete and very wisely threw it out of bounds into the near side as he was just about to go down initial uh, – Pressure was provided by Jared Bell, and then it was Drew McBeth, the defensive end, that almost got him to the ground. Talk about Preston Hare before having happy feet. That was perfect footwork, just dancing around the defensive lineman, avoiding a sack. I'm going to tell you, this is the difference from last year to this year, guys, and the confidence in Luke Wendell. They'll trot him on for what will be a 40-yard 40. 40 field goal. He missed from 40, made from 41 a year ago. Last year, they probably go for it on third down and four. 
40 yep. yard attempt for the right side hash. Snap coming back, the hold from Smith. Everything is perfect. Wendell's kick is on the way, and it is good, but we get a flag, and we may have a delay of game against OBU. Delay of game. Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell you, if he could do the same thing again, the five won't make any difference, but you got to do it again. So instead of 40, which was cleanly through, as soon as that ball came off of the tee, you knew that baby had enough distance, and there was no question about putting it in between the uprights. So now instead of a 40, it'll be a 45-yard field goal, still from that right side hash mark. With what breeze there is to his back out of the hold of Dylan Smith. Everything is perfect. Wendell approaches, kicks. The ball is in the air, and good! Luke Wendell with a 45-yard field goal for the Great American Conference Player of the Week for special teams. I think that would have been good from 49 yards. 34-21 yep. Bison. We'll pause with 11.35 to play. This is Oklahoma Baptist football with the Bison Radio Network. I'm Attorney Noble McIntyre with McIntyre Law. If you've had a hip replacement surgery recently, you may have had an artificial implant with metal-on-metal -metal contacts. If so, you may be experiencing pain or other side effects, and you need to know your rights. Metal-on-metal -metal hips have had significant problems, and some have even been recalled. Know your rights. If you or someone you love needs our help, put your future in the hands of an experienced trial lawyer. Call McIntyre Law today. On behalf of myself and the entire McIntyre Law team, I can assure you, no one will work harder than we will. Trade it in for more and buy it for less. At Hudeberg Chevy in Midwest City, it's that simple. Get more money for your trade and buy new Chevys for less. And you'll get payments that fit any budget. HudebergGM.com. You can count on Hudeberg, we'll give you more. Two of three in two games, and his 45-yard attempt was just two yards shy of matching his career high of 47. More importantly, points off of the turnover. OBU leads it 34-21 over Vistage Southeastern with 11.35 to play here with the ball game. Our fourth quarter brought to you by Noble McIntyre and McIntyre Law. Wendell approaches and boots it away. Good end over end kick. Robert yeah. will backpedal, and he's going to bring it out. He hesitated now. He's in trouble. Ran up the back of a blocker. Gets out to the 15 and still almost managed to get to the 20-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what, that was nearly disastrous for Southeastern in a second half that has been anything but really very good for the Savage Storm. The hesitation cost him tons of yards, maybe 10 yards. You might have been able to get to the 30 off that. Let me tell you how long he hesitated, <laughs> just so you can put it in perspective. The referee was standing next to him. He waited long enough. The referee's arm was coming up to signal <laughs> touchback, and, and he stopped it about halfway up because he took off running. And that's five yards deep in the end zone as yeah. well. Unfortunately, personal foul. The foul was called against Aaron Regis. That's his first unsportsmanlike penalty, so the second one will disqualify him. And after all that, they ended up better than they would have had he taken an E. Line of scrimmage at the 33, so a break for Southeastern. 11.28 to play of the ball game. Maybe Southeastern has one timeout left. OBU has three. Handoff goes to Burks up the middle, and Burks gets up to the 35-yard line that is pushed backwards. He'll get two, and that defensive front guy is now starting to swarm for the gray and white of OBU. Exactly what defensive coordinator Brandon Morris wanted. He needed a little bit more gang tackling, a little bit more initial hits in the backfield. 11 minutes exactly to play from Shawnee. 34-21 Oklahoma Baptist. Two receivers left and right. The press box side is the wide side of the field. They'll throw it out right, and a screen is set to the 40, out to the 43-yard line, and that'll be enough for a first down. Felton Hatcher with his second catch of the day, his fifth of his junior season. He's a native of Thompson, Georgia. Hatcher caught the screen in the right flat and just took it quick up for nine yards. Yep, they're going to spot it a yard short, or less than a yard, so it's third down and less than one at the 43-yard line for Southeastern. 
10-27 to play in the ball game. OBU leading by 13 as they have dominated this second half. Burks gets the call, stretched out, has running room, down the numbers, 50, 40, 35, and dragging tacklers with him finally gets to the ground. It was Alviar. You were right the way to say it, Felipe Alviar, redshirt sophomore from Katy, Texas, that may have saved a touchdown. As good as a running back as Burks is, he is lack of speed. He's void of speed. He had a huge opening. Alviar just ran him down easily. Ten minutes to play. Southeastern on the move. They have started this drive of their own 33 in three plays. They're upfield to the OBU 31. Burks is the single setback. They'll hand it off. No, it's a keeper. Skinner running left is tackled. Right at the line of scrimmage, and that play was diagnosed perfectly by the OBU defense. And the one that broke it up was Jason Lee. It's good to see him back out there. He was on crutches. One dog at the end of last week's win in overtime at East Central. That was a great play because nobody knew where the ball was. There you had half the defense going with the running back, half of going with the quarterback, but Lee knew that Skinner kept it. The clock right now is starting to become a big time ally of OBU. Under nine and a half to play, Southeastern again with one timeout. Second and 10, Savage Storm at the Bison 31. Play action pass, Skinner looking right, flag comes down, Skinner stretched out to the 41, gets out of an ankle tackle, runs outside the numbers at the 30, and is finally ushered out of bounds at the 27, but I think that's coming back, probably a hold against Southeastern. Marco Lucas had Skinner in his sights, but Skinner just outran him to the right boundary. Let's listen in. Line of scrimmage will go back to the 41-yard line, so it'll be second down and 20. Jeff Davis, the sitter, was called for the hold, and that is his second penalty. He was called for a false start early in the ball game in the first quarter. 9.09 to play from Shawnee. 34-21. Homestand continues next week with a visit from Arkansas Tech, and then two weeks from today, a visit to Harding, last year's national semifinalist. Burks in the backfield, three receivers wide right. Here comes the pressure. They hold him out. Skinner has plenty of time. Throws the ball deflected and almost intercepted. It was almost intercepted. And look who it was. Alviar that deflected the pass and it fluttered into the air. And George McClendon, who's making his first collegiate start today at quarter for OBU, could not quite get his hands underneath the ball. What anticipatory skills by Alviar. He ran about eight yards and timed that perfectly to hit the receiver to break that ball up. Would you spell that word for me, please? <laughs> anticipatory. I couldn't say that if I tried. <laughs> Third and 20 at the 41 of OBU for Southeastern. And a timeout defensively called by the Bison. OBU has two left. Southeastern has one. And we are approaching the midway point here of the fourth quarter. 34-21 is our score. Bison football is brought to you in part by the First National Bank and Trust Company. For every season, the First National Bank and Trust Company is your bank for life. SSM Health St. Anthony Hospital Shawnee compassionately serves the health care needs of Shawnee and its surrounding communities. We're known for providing exceptional care and offering the latest advances in medical services. PNK Equipment invites you to stop by any of their 18 locations in Oklahoma and Arkansas and see why around here John Deere starts with PNK. With Felipe Al Alviar making that great play, the reason why there's so much green grass for him to run and, and break that up is because the Bison actually only had 10 players on the field. That's why they <laughs> spent the time out. Good catch there, Scott. Third down and 20, Southeastern to the 41 of Oklahoma Baptist. Direct snap back, Skinner from the 49 with a pocket holding, flips it over the middle, ball is caught. And he is wrestled down after a very short gain to the 37-yard line. He picked up four, and you know who it was? Landon Rowland. You betcha. Thank you. Between Landon and Al Alviar, they have had two huge games of that secondary. Lane Martin just overran that play just a hair, but Landon Roulette was there for the backup play. Fourth down and 16, and Southeastern at least has their punt team on. Keep in mind, they faked one. You wouldn't think they would here. They need to get all the way down to the 22 of the bye, so it's fourth and 16. OBU has Jacquez Henderson back to receive at the 10-yard line, and it is a fake. They flip it to the wide out of the near side, and he is tackled behind the line, lost the football, and OBU's come up with it. They flipped it to Michael Robert, who was lined up wide to the near side, 
and he tried to circle outside the 45 at OBU, diagnosed that one perfectly. Robert copped up the football at OBU, has it at the 45 of their own into the field. I think they, I think he was going to pass the football. He was looking downfield. I, uh, the play apparently never developed, or there was good defense uh, on that far side by the Bison because somebody recovered in time. He had no chance to do what the hope was. He was freshman McClendon. George McClendon was the man on the far side. Handoff goes to Tyler Stever on first down, and, boy, he works hard for a yard to the 46. That's actually going to be a pass from Carlos to Robert. Second down and nine. OBU right now can afford to just work the clock, leading 34-21 with 7.36 to play in the contest. Bison will stay home. Southeastern will go home next week. Looks like the Savage Storm may go home with their first Division II loss in school history to Oklahoma Baptist. And to work the clock, who better to have in there is bruising freshman running back Tyler Stever. No fumble on that play. Again, it was a forward pass, so OBU takes over on down. Stever gets the handoff, and he's got a little running room right up the gut, tiptoeing his way down to the 48 of Southeastern. Running behind Creed Wright, Zach Blevins, and Brian Cornell on that right side. That's one thing. Grant Gower talked to us about early in the year. One dog was the chemistry that Wright and Cornell have on that offensive line. Oh, definitely. And with these tackles for Southeastern, you have to have some push. And then Stever just followed those guards right up the middle. Third down and three. 6.46 to play, and the clock is rolling. Southeastern has to be careful as to when to burn that final timeout. They only have one left. They're down two scores. Power package for the Bison. They motion a man to the near side. Stever is the tailback. They hand it off to Tyler, and he is unable to get to the first down. Good open field stop that time in the secondary by Quincy Dotson. Good clock management. Always important in situations like this. Make it as difficult as you can for the opposition next time they get the ball. That time, the play was called. Everybody knew what the play was going to be run with 14 seconds on the play clock. He never gets anybody totally in, in formation till four seconds. The snap comes with two seconds left on the play clock. Now you got the 40-second play clock running down to nine seconds right here. I think the, they're going to take a timeout right here, and then they'll punt it. They'll either take a timeout or a delay of game, and no, I right. think they're, they're going to be a delay, delay of game, game is to yeah. save that second timeout. You're not going to no. go for it anyway, so yeah. five yards gives sure. Hayden a little bit better field position to work with and try to pin Southeastern inside the 15. Okay, that's why you won, uh, You defeated me in the last chess match we had. Okay, <laughs> now I know what the reason was. Oh, if, you ever nice lose to me, if you ever lose to me in chess, I feel bad for you because I've never attempted a game. <laughs> Fourth down and seven at the 48-yard line of Southeastern. Hayden Ashley will be in punt formation inside his 35. Hayden has averaged 38.3 on three previous punt attempts today. Southeastern has 10 along the line of scrimmage. Now they'll peel back for the return. So, rugby style kick. Ashley boots it to the near side. It's caught by Robert at the 20. And look at the special teams coverage by OBU. There Thanks. were four green and, or excuse me, gray jerseys down there. And it was Seth Glasscock on special teams that led the charge. Hey, Hayden Ashley had a little bit of trouble with that snap. He bobbled it. Then he bobbled it. He bobbled it a third time, and with the pressure coming, still was able to get off the kick. It's going to be a loss on the Michael Robert return. He fielded the 20. They're going to spot it back at the 17-yard line. So Southeastern with one timeout with 5.32 to go with the ball game, down two scores basically has become a one-dimensional offense now with Austin Skinner. Kenneth Burke who's had a big game today in the backfield. Lines up to the right. Skidder drops to the 10. Has time, throws it left. Has low at the 20, turns inside of the 23. And then it's going to be dropped there by Lane Martin, who continues a career best day on defense for him. Gain to the 24. Seven-yard catch, second down and three. Skinner with Burks in the backfield. Will drop to the 15. Now he's throwing deep over the middle for Lowe, who makes the catch over the defensive back and then dropped it. On the way down, George McClendon was there with him. That was a good throw by Skinner and almost a really good play by Sky Lowe. Well, you, when you go back and you look at this game, there's a 
there's a catch that doesn't happen right there at the other end in the first half. A catch that looked like it was going to be made, stripped away. You take those two strips away, that's a lot of difference right now in a 13-point lead. Good point, Brooksy. 4.53 to go. Clock stops for the incompleted pass. Third and four Southeastern down to their last gasp here. Back to throw Skinner looking left ball incomplete. And the play again was read perfectly by Lane Martin. And the former Stratford Bulldog gets up and waves incomplete. And now I think Southeastern has to go oh, for it. Down two scores question. with one touchdown. Martin just sitting back from the linebacker position. Takes a good angle. I think he might have got a finger on that ball. Really disrupted the pass to the receiver. Lane has had himself a game. Here's your game right here. Fourth down and three, Southeastern of their own 24. Skinner will give it on the draw to Burks, and he is hit. And I think after initial contact, he spun forward and may have gotten to the 27 where he needed to go. And that was Martin again that almost stopped the running back for the first down. He got underneath his thighs, tipped him over, but he fell across for the first down. So Southeastern will hurry up. They'll start the clock with 4.40 to go. First and 10 of the 27. They floated out deep right, looking for Hatcher, and he overthrew him by five yards. Hatcher was working one-on-one -on -one with Keelandis Colton, who last week at East Central had a couple of pass knockdowns, one late in the ball game that was really big for the Bison defense. Uh, Keelandis wasn't going to knock that one down because he was beaten by about four or five steps on that play. He got a break there because that one sailed. And... You know, that one sailed, and there was no wind that time, and it still sailed over the tendered receiver. Wind is non-existent at the moment. Second out of 10 of the 27. Skinner to throw, dancing, throw it over the middle, and he has Jalen Sims. Sims stays on his feet, leaps over one would-be defender at the 35 and has a first down out to the 38-yard line. Hey, that's a great move by Jalen Sims because that's going to be about uh, third down and about four. Now they move the chains. It'll be first down and 10. Southeastern down by 13 on the move with one timeout and just over four minutes to play. Skinner dumps it out right, and the ball is caught. That is Felton Hatcher on the reception of the 42-yard line. I'm going to tell you, boys, uh, the uh, Bison should have had too many men on the field. Grant Genrich did not get off before the snap, and he went right by the line judge who apparently didn't have peripheral vision because that should have been a flag. Second and six, Skinner scrambles, has a receiver wide open on the far side, sky low at the 42, and he gets up to the 40 of Oklahoma Baptist, and sky low was wide open. I don't know how you leave a guy that open because Skinner had a defensive lineman breathing down his neck from behind and almost got to it. Right defensive end, Quentin Thorpe, was on the tails of Skinner. First and 10, Southeastern, a gain of 18 of the – pass. They throw it out to Lowe again. He has another first down. Was hit, fumbled the ball, and OBU's come up with it. Alviar's got it. Felipe Alviar with a fumble recovery. Man, did Sky Lowe take a pop once he had that first down when he turned up field. And they are congratulating Matthew Tiger on that hit. Boys, we're 319 from some history, would you say? Can you tell me the last two and oh start in division two play for Oklahoma Baptist University? Zero. No, you can tell me in three minutes and 19 seconds oh. of playing time. <laughs> so Alviar lands on the fumble that was forced by Matthew Tigert and recovered to the 23 yard line. That's where Herod Company will take over. Eli Paul is the setback out there for the Bison. Southeastern with a four man front. And before OBU snaps it, we get the play blown dead. It's not a delay of game. There may have been movement up front. The infraction was Chase. called against Jace Garrison, who was out there for the first time in a game this year. Jace wears number 70. He is a redshirt sophomore from Davis. So line of scrimmage at the 18-yard line, first and 15. I don't know Garrison was even in the ball game. Handoff goes to Eli Paul. Paul squirts free, and look at that. Yards after contact gets him to the 25-yard line, a gain of seven, and it's going to ring it up second down and short for OBU. When Paul ran into the linebacker, he did a 360 spin to get an extra four yards. Eli Paul last week at East Central played, and uh, he carried one time for seven yards. Let's just talk about that. You've had four different running backs in this game, and uh, this is a 13-point lead with 
2.50 to go. There hasn't been any time that it wasn't important, and Grant Garris used four running backs in this game. Second down and eight at the 25-yard line. They show some pressure to the Savage Storm off the quarter. They're going to hand it off again to Eli Paul, and Paul may have lost the football. They Paul's stacked in. him up at the 25-yard line, and Southeastern has recovered a fumble, and that is absolutely the last thing OBU needed. A short field with two and a half minutes to go for Southeastern, down 13. Brand new lifeline for the Savage Storm. But the only chance they had was a quick turnover right there. Still cannot tell who turn or recovered the fumble for Southeastern. They're checking here with the booth. Southeastern will take over at the 25-yard line of OBU. Down 34 to 21, 2.30 to go in the ball game. Back to throw is Skinner. Now he'll be flush for the pocket. He'll run down the middle field, 20-15. Inside the numbers, 10 bounces right to the 5, and he's in for the touchdown. Just when you thought that everything was put away, the closet door just opened. Trip Ducks on the board, 34-27, and an extra point try that will put them less than a touchdown down. Austin Skinner, a 25-yard run. He carried seven for 35 at his first career rushing touchdown at Southeastern last week against Southern Nazarene. So Joel Carlos will be on for the point after try with trip deuces to play in the fourth quarter. High snap, ball is down. Carlos one step approaches on the way, and it is good. Now you get to pick up a first down or two. 2.22 to play, new ball game. Time out of the field, Oklahoma Baptist 34, Southeastern 28. We're back in a moment on the Bison Radio Network. By Noble McIntyre at McIntyre Law. Here is the all-important onside kick. Carlos will kick it to the far side. OBU with a good hands team, and the Bison have recovered at the 46-yard line of Southeastern. That might do it with 2.20 to play in a six-point ball camp. Couple first downs, and Wendell out there to ice it with a field goal. I'm looking to see who... Two twenty to play. OBU officially will start at the Southeastern forty-seven yard line. You know, Seth Glasscock, the tight end, reached out with one hand, dangerously tipped it to it. himself, yeah. and then got it underneath his belly for Bison ball. Single setback is Tyler Stever from the forty-seven of the Savage Storm. They fake the handoff, throw it out left. Hinkley is hit immediately and dropped for no gain by DeQuan Brown, who came up and just took the legs right out from underneath him. That's a really good open field tackle. It actually kind of helped the Bison because Hinkley was heading out of bounds, but the tackle was so sure that he went yep. straight down to keep the clock running. By the way, guys, look at that field, how it's held up this week after multiple inches of rain here in Shawnee. Well, oh. in 2016, it was voted the best athletic uh, football field in the state for any university. Thank you. Very few divots. It's very soft, but... Good track out there. Second and 10, OBU at the Savage Storm, 47. One back set, fake the handoff, throw it again. Short left to Hinkley, who is able to get inside the 45 to the 44. That That's about three. And here we go, third down and long for OBU. We're at a minute 24 to play in the contest. Southeastern not yet electing to use that timeout. They will have to use it if you convert to this third down right here. Hinkley did a great job by not going toward the sideline. It was identical play. He stayed in, cut back just to keep the clock moving. 
OBU is going to milk the clock down. There's still a I long am really surprised. They I didn't can't take believe the this. Timeout. I can't. I can't believe there wasn't a timeout taken. I mean, they've let. I mean, you're, you're, you're going to allow them to go underneath a minute, and the play clock's down to three, to two, to one. They snap, snap it. Hare throws it out left for Tyler Stever behind the line, and he is tackled. Again, it was Daquan Brown that came up from corner, and now the Savage Storm apparently are going to use their final timeout. I, I don't understand that strategy at all. I knew that's the way they were looking. It, if OBU converted, they were going to have to burn it, but my goodness, you let 30 or 20, uh, almost 25 seconds. 40 seconds. Three seconds go off the clock. Now you have no timeouts. You need a touchdown, an extra point to win, and you only have 46 seconds remaining. Well, with any kind of, uh, unless something goes wrong from the OBU standpoint, almost the worst scenario will be uh, starting at the 20. If they, get, if they get a decent pooch kick here out of Wendell, got a chance to have them inside uh, maybe the 15, down around the 10, with uh, probably about uh, 35 seconds to go the length of the field. Shop OBUBison.com is your home for the very best and officially licensed bison apparel from brands like Adidas, Callaway Golf, Columbia, and Under Armour. Visit Shop OBUBison.com today and take advantage of fast shipping and industry-leading customer service. Shop OBUBison.com, the official online store of Oklahoma Baptist Athletics. Here we go, Hayden Ashley in punt formation of the 41-yard line. Snap floats back, he takes a step right, pooches it to the near side, a good kick. Hit at the 19, turns over inside the 10, inside the five. OBU has it surrounded and Hayden Ashley has done it again. That's gonna be a 42 yard kick, the last 15 of it on a spin and roll and you leave him Staring at a long, long field at what we say, 35 seconds? 35 That's seconds, no timeout. Just keep in mind, they've gone 98 yards once on 13 plays. But that drive was... That was foot. shorter than 35 seconds, wasn't it? Uh, no, it was not. No, it was, really. Okay, it, well, you're right. <laughs> It was uh, in 6.29 seconds. Oh, those, that's a colon in between. Yeah, yeah, Six minutes and 29 Atta seconds. Boy. All here, right, here we go. First and 10 at the two-yard line. Skinner with an empty backfield. Flag comes down. There may have been movement up front against Southeastern. False start. The call against the Savage Storm. Arkansas Tech here next week. Pre-game of the Bison Radio Network at 12.30. OBU looks, looks. Well, let me reverse that. They are 34 seconds away from a 2-0 start for the first time in the Division II era. Half the distance to the goal line. Now they have to go 99 yards in 34 seconds. One back set, Burks. Back to throw, Skidder. Eight yards deep in the end zone. Throws over the middle, and a rolling catch is made at the 15-yard line. Obi, you'll give them that all day long as the catch was made by Braxton Kincaid because once they get those chains set, the clock is going to start to roll. It's first rolling down right and, now. First down and 10 of the 15, 20 seconds to play. They throw it deep left again for Kincaid, and he could not make the catch, working against the quarter that time, George McClendon, who never turned around, Brooksy, and OBU's lucky that wasn't a catch. Stops the clock with 18, 18 seconds to go. Actually, they ran three more off. They have reset the clock to 18 seconds. No timeout. Southeastern to their own 15-yard line. Oklahoma Baptist leading 34 to 28. Burks remains in there as the single setback. Two receivers left and right. Direct snap. Skitter drops to the eight. Pocket holds, throws over the middle, over through the intended receiver, and it should have been intercepted. It should have been intercepted by Matthew Tiger. The ball hit him right in the hands, maybe even on the eight on the front of his jersey yep. at the 40-yard line. He cannot believe it. He thought he had it. He did have it. Here we go. Third down and 10 of the 15. 13 seconds to play. Two receivers left and right. Skinner to throw. Will throw over the middle, and it is caught. First down at the 25, and he's knocked out of the 27-yard line. And it was Kenneth Burks out of the backfield. Five seconds to play. They'll hold spike everything. the football. And... Well, I'm saying hold everything. I mean, you're not supposed to snap the ball until they got the right. down marker set. They never had the down marker set. So Burks with a 12-yard catch, 
Makes it now second down and 10. They're going to give him the spike. Time for one final play. Yeah. Five seconds to go. Hail Mary time. Look, at, look for the funny stuff here. Throw it over the middle and play the lateral game. Play-by-play -play guy's dream. Austin Skinner, empty backfield. Drops to the 18. Throws over the middle, and it is caught at the 40-yard line, and he gets free of two defenders. Now he'll flip it back to Skinner. Skinner at the 27, flips it out. Now they'll toss it back to Burks. Burks plays a hop off of the turf, and then OBU finally runs him down from the height of the 25. The football comes free, and the game is over. And Oklahoma Baptist has beaten Southeastern Oklahoma State. Final score, 34-28 OBU. Congratulations to Chris Jensen and his staff, a hard, hard-working staff. People have asked me, is this team better? I said emphatically, yes, they are better. Okay, you win at East Central, a team that if you're going to have a good season, you should win at. Today was a statement win that this program is on the uptick here on Bison Hill. I'd say you got that right, my friend. Early in preseason, we came over, we had a chance to look at this team. You could tell that there was, there was just a different aura about everything. Everything from coaches to the way players reacted to just, general, just a general feel. Does it really mean anything with a football team? Anybody that's ever been around one for any amount of time knows it means a lot. It always means a lot. There's a different feel here, and you can tell it, you can feel it, and it's in the air. And next week, right here on this field, the Bison will have a chance to go to 3-0. and Final score, Oklahoma Baptist 34, Southeastern 28. OBU celebrating with the student section who did a great job on the east side here of Crane.